So the dude is a whole two minutes late. Now, ladies and gents, don't adjust your screens. Don't adjust your monitors. This is not a deja vu. It is not Saturday, and it is not wrist shot week. We are going to be looking at something a bit different for a change. Uh, a rehash and looking at the Phillips auction that we normally love and know well. So let's get started. Um, I want to say hi to everyone in the chat. Uh, can you hear me all OK? Please comment one if you can hear me. It's a good way to start, or, or any number you want. I mean, I don't care. Uh, Blue Shirt, great to have you. Clive, Horror Mirror, there's so many of you already here. Um, Enzo, underachieving. I really look forward to sharing the uh, all the adverbs and adjectives with you all. Uh, Rohit, Jimmy, Jeb, Eric Bell, Megan, Welsh Carl, Oh, there's so many more of you here. Thank you, everyone, for joining. You can hear me? Fantastic. Hope it's clear. 69. Thanks, Hans. Uh, 1, 1. Perfect. 99. Okay. 3.14. Isn't that pie? I decline. Right. So I'm on my third coffee. Let me just get... I'll show you what I'm wearing, what I have been wearing. It's so nice to rekindle the relationship again with the Seamaster. Oh, it makes me smile. It really does make me smile, but that is not what the show is about. It is not Wrist Shot Week. It is... Reviewing watches from the Philips auction. So we're going to start by, let's see if I can get this right. No, there, and then full screen, and then boom. Will that work? So I'm just going to quickly talk over this while we uh, get ourselves settled. It's quite nice. We've got a bit of a slideshow going on. I've done some jiggery pokery, and <laughs> we'll be able to see that there's not going to be a lot of sidebars and things in the way. So you should be able to enjoy the full screen experience. I hope. I really hope. Uh, are they rare and exceptional? Neferon, you have no idea how rare and exceptional they are. Uh, it's it's really interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna address it. We're gonna have a good time. Uh, there's nothing better than to uh, have a very dry sense of humor over this week. It's been a hell of a long week for a lot of us. I think. I mean, I I can't believe it's Friday already. It doesn't feel. It's been a fast week, but also a long week in a sense. Really slow, slow going. Jiggery pokery, jingly jangly, yes, Clive. Okay, so I'm going to do this trick again. I just learned this about five minutes ago, and it's fantastic. So how cool is that? Nothing says I love, I hate my retinas more than a white screen. So I've worked out that, you know, you go dark mode. There's a way to actually hide the top bar, and now we can actually enjoy the full screen experience without burning out our eyes. Isn't that fantastic? So... There are 179 lots. Let me just start by saying that uh, we did one of these about five months ago, and that broke a record on the page. <clears throat> so if you want to get my attention, tag me in the chat. It'll be a bit easier for me to see. Uh, yes, they sure do, Clive. So we broke a record, and that was the sub three-hour uh, mark back in the day. Sorry, no, the sub four-hour. It was like three hours 50, and that was monumental. So now I don't plan on doing the same thing this time around, hopefully, because we're going to filter through the fluff, I think, and stick to the stuff that we want to look at instead of just focusing on the, the banal and the peculiar. But it should be a lot of fun. I mean, uh, this is the screen you're going to be looking at while we talk. Uh, come in for the, for the watches and stay for the commentary, I think. That'll be the entertaining aspect. I just need to remind myself that lot 92 has been removed, and if I click it, the whole page will crash. So that should be good. Uh, and the rest of you here is joining us. Great. Thomas, I see, Clam Walker, and many more from Pittsburgh, from Ken. Underachieving Fisherman's Friends. Yes, I do. I've got them in front of me here. I don't know if you can if you can hear that, but uh, i got all my friends. i got whiskey, coffee, water. I'm on my fourth coffee, I think. I needed it because I don't know how long these shows are going to be. I don't plan on it being a five-hour marathon. We're going to get through a lot of the stuff that we don't want to look at and focus in on, you know, the stuff is popular. What makes, <laughs> Blue Shirt, let's break another record. What makes these discussions good beyond just the, the great visuals that we get to enjoy and to not only see the prices and everything that's going for is that we can learn a bit more about the watch industry in a sense, I think. Um, it's, it's been a strange year. I mean, I can, I can say compared to the, the, the one we saw five months ago, it's nowhere near as exciting as, as that first show that we had a look at. The variety is just not anywhere near the same. There's some great stuff, don't get me wrong, but it's, it's kind of banal in many areas. It's stuff we've seen so often. And in a way, it's a commentary to see what sells, yes, but it's also unfortunate because the Phillips auction is one of the broadest, you know, most accessible auctions for everyone to look at in this watch space. And using this platform could be so beneficial if they do want to start promoting other brands out there. You know, the more outlier names. 
I remember last time we had an A384 Zenith El Primero that was gorgeous with tropical dials, and it went for a song as well. It didn't go over over the pricing. So yeah, they they way yeah we learn they pay way too much for Rolex. Yes, I, I agree, 121. So as we generally note on the right hand side of the screen, you will see the description, the reference numbers, which is great. We can really have a good time laughing at this. All the estimated prices uh, in pounds, euros, Swiss francs, and the sale. Uh, as you see, this is number one of 179. How long have I been going for? Five minutes, and we haven't even started. Good God. Okay, so I think we should just get it rolling because that way, you know, we don't know how long this monster is going to be. But if you'd like to ask me any questions as we go through, by all means, I'm an open book. We can have a good time uh, and just kick back, relax. I hope you're drinking something nice. And I hope you've had a, a semi-enjoyable week considering all that's been going on in the world in all fronts. Right, so we're going to start with the Patek Philippe Nautilus annual calendar. It's a good thing that the references are here, so we can actually remember them. So 5726A, imagining a white gold. Now uh, we have a fine and attractive steel. So I'm going to address this later on as we carry on through the talk, but uh, it's pretty it's pretty entertaining. You would think five months down the line they would improve the descriptions of these, but I think a lot of the time they're getting worse. And uh, we're going to, yeah, we can have a good laugh at all that. But the bonus is we get to see the prices this went for. So estimate between 25 and 45 Swiss francs, and it went for 60. And I mean, again, it's a run-of-the-mill model. You can get this, you can get this at an AD still, circa 2012. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, come on, there's so much more variety out there for you. Um, by the way, I'm going to leave this as it is. I'm not going to zoom into the pictures or anything because that opens a new tab and the proportions get thrown out and there's no consistency. So I hope you're streaming this from your you know, TV and you can enjoy this in full scale. I'm so glad you can hear me. Right. So for the rest of you joining, it's good to have you here. Thank you for joining in. Again, it's not wrist shot week, but we get to see a bit more variety and diversity. So Mark says Sotheby's also has some great auctions to watch for sure. I've never actually followed a Sotheby's auction. Maybe that can be something to do in the next phase because Phillips is good. They have some good moments, but uh, overall, I think we'll be flicking. We'll be flicking through a lot of these without much attention. So, hitting the whiskey, and I'll be joining you in a sec. This is supposed to have been an off week for me, and I've been designing apparel all week. Yeah, I'll tell you, my eyes are square already. So. Forgive me if I read something wrong. In for the Patek lighter, Enzo. God, that's funny. I've been flicking through the, the show today, in and out. I've had some serious technical problems. I really hope this site doesn't crash or something dark. Wow, some people are drinking some nice stuff today. This is a Glenlivet uh, 12, I think, again, that I had the last show. Okay, so Patek Philippe Nautilus, we've seen this many times. Uh, the, without the bracelet, I've worn a 5712 leather strap. It's pretty comfortable. It has a great amount of, it has more substance than you think uh, on the wrist. But then the bracelet does kind of complete it a bit more. This watch was designed for an integrated bracelet in the first place. So yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit on the fence. Anyway, this carry on moving through. As we would expect, the Nautilus went for way over list, unfortunately. Now for this kind of example, a diamond dial, diamond bezel date just. I don't think we're going to be spending much time on a watch like this because it's not something that we tend to focus on very much. But uh, the photography is pretty good. We can enjoy those little bits and pieces. And uh, I guess what we've been running for eight minutes, I can address these, uh, these, these points. A rare and attractive white gold diamond set automatic wristwatch with date. So whoever it is behind the scenes, Joe, Susan, whoever you are who sits and, and does this, we, we thank you greatly. I can imagine it's a serious pain in the naught listing 179 of these descriptions uh, can be very taxing and tiring, but copying and pasting the same thing over and over again does get a bit, you know, there's no, there's no grab to it. It loses its uh, base. I've got to get more coffee into me. So my suggestion is, if anyone from Philips is watching, joining in, uh, bullet points, just a simple bullet point saying rare, attractive, white gold, diamond set, done. You don't need a, an essay. Brevity is the soul of wit. Isn't that the expression? Uh, yeah. So, and I see Megan's drinking nitro coffee. Oh. So anyway, diamonds, diamonds are forever. Going to move on to number three because, I mean, hey, now we're talking. 
funnily enough, uh, so this being the hype watch from the last few weeks, months, Hulk Submariner, a fine and attractive stainless steel. That's not too bad of a description. Uh, between 7 and 12, and it went for 17.6. I was expecting this to go for 20 or something daft because I was watching this live and thought, you know, yeah, drinking green tea, yeah, good. We're looking at something green here. The Hulk Submariner. Uh, they even call it the Hulk in the in the Phillips auction, which is pretty pretty interesting. And I mean, we watched the the, the auction of the five months ago, and seeing that the Pepsi's and other models were going for serious amounts of money, the modern Pepsi's, I should say. This actually went for a pretty reasonable price, considering what it is now that it's discontinued. But still, I mean, the demand for these is crazy at this point, and it's it's getting a little bit out of hand, don't you think? Uh, doesn't move me at all. Megan, are we talking about diamonds or are we talking about the Hulk? I, I feel the same way about the Hulk, really. I do love the green dial. I think they did an excellent job with the green color on the dial, the emerald burst. The bezel, though, in some lights it looks great. In others, it looks like plastic. That's just my two cents. And uh, Mark saying, I love these auction review shows so much. Oh, it's my pleasure, Mark, really. Uh, it's been five months since we did one and thought, you know what? Uh, it's been a while, a little bit of diversity. Why not? I mean, what kind of moron decides, okay, I'm going to sit down and talk about 180 watches in a sitting, this moron. Right, let's move on to number four. We've seen the Hulk Submariner about a trillion times. Hey, now, here we is another great example. A 5196R Patek Calatrava, a rare and attractive. This watch ain't rare, I can tell you that much. Uh, they're all over the place. And for what it went for, a little bit over what you would expect. Also remember, I forgot, the buyer's premium that we spoke about during the last show five months ago, it sits at around 30%. I think they mentioned that buyer's premium is now around 26%. So so I heard, I might be wrong. Uh, if you can watch the replay of the show, I don't know. But yeah, the 5196R, it does definitely, does definitely appeal to me. I think in rose gold especially, it's the model that I like. Uh, yellow gold is a bit more classic. The white gold, much more understated, but... Yes, yeah, so you see, Enzo. If I click the if I click the image to zoom, uh, you don't want to know what happens when I click it. The whole because as as it is, I'm zoomed into the image with the magic mouse. As I zoom out and click on it, it should be fine. We can enjoy it in much higher resolution. But then the download speed might get a bit crazy, and it won't be that interesting. The the problem is, though, no, I have to constantly zoom in and out and have to realign, and it, it'll it'll be a pain. So I'm thinking it'll be better just to leave it like this, if that's okay with you all. I don't know what the download speed is like here at the moment. I've had a bit of a problem earlier today, so hopefully it's okay. Can you see everything fine? I hope it's clear enough for you all. I'm just going to refresh the stream on my laptop and see what else is going on in the chats. Uh, let's have a look. There were a few questions pointed at me. So the 5196R, I think, is a classic. It's gorgeous. We are going to see a, a reference 96 a little bit later, which is also stunning. So Mark says, does the sales price include sales tax? With Sotheby's, you pay additional 25 on top of the bid. Outrageous. So as far as I know, the buyer's premium is a, is that package. Uh, I assume that they say 26%, but then when you do add all the shipping costs and everything on top, it's like 30% on top of the sale. So whatever this watch went for, 16.3, 16.4, say, add another 30% on top of that, that's what you're buying the watch for. So it's it's insane. The numbers... 121 click bezels. <laughs> Here we go. He's doing the numbers. Eight minutes, two lots. Four minutes per lot, average 111 hours. Yeah, exactly. I did the maths earlier and thought, good God, I'm going to die. So I'm going to try and speed it up. Um, in the last true submariner, Dan, I agree with you. My absolute favorite. So yeah, 5196, stunning watch. And then we have a rare and attractive pink gold calendar wristwatch. I mean, come on. 2014, I'm pretty sure these are still made at the moment. Uh, for 13,000, it went under the estimate, which is a nice change of pace. Can't go wrong with a day date. Champagne, or should I say silver dial with a rose, rose gold finish, pink gold finish. On leather is also quite attractive. It's a bit more understated. It's the, it's the Get Carter watch, right? Yeah, great. Sounds like money laundering. Yeah, underachieving, um, it's, it's crazy. I mean, we're going to see some stupid prices later on. Do not worry. Is, is this image centered on the screen? See, I don't want that powered by StreamYard getting in the way of the, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll get there, ladies and gents. Uh, good evening. 
Perez, good to have you here. You haven't bought anything yet, Megan? Don't worry. Uh, there's also tomorrow, and tomorrow is where the good stuff is. Also should mention that the first set of like 100 went today. Uh, the second set is going tomorrow. Okay, let's move on next. We've seen enough of this. Well, this watch did pretty well, considering what it is. Um, so, uh, just slipped my mind now what I was going to say. Why this, why this started on a Friday and not a Saturday, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's a bit peculiar. You'd expect it to go over the weekend, but for a Friday, it's a little bit strange, especially at like two in the afternoon in Europe. So the rest of the world have to stay up until the early hours to see it. Kind of like what you're doing now, most of you who are in the, <laughs> the other side. So this is a 5140 Platinum, rare and attractive. I mean, this word should be taken out completely. Rare, the two words, rare and attractive. Just cut it. Just, just keep it simple. Don't gild the lily. It's not, there's no point. Uh, you can be so much more, you don't even need to, to describe these things really. It's not like it's working for an algorithm or anything like that. So, I mean, yeah, but it's a gorgeous model. I mean, platinum, uh, full, it's, I think it's a perpetual, yeah, perpetual calendar, micro rotor, pretty stunning. And it went for 52,000, uh, between 35 and 55 was the estimate. Add another 30% on top of that. And yeah, you get, you get quite a uh, middle finger. Gotta love that blue though. Navy blue is pretty gorgeous on a platinum case. Subtle. Yeah, it's pretty stunning. Gotta admit. Anyway, this is number six. Moving on to number seven. Don't worry, I'll hold on the more uh, enticing stuff for a little bit longer. Just getting myself into the swing of it. And and for all of you who are actually joining in and watching this, I, I can't thank you enough. I mean, it's it's a bit peculiar doing these kinds of shows. It's not It's not everyone's cup of tea. I would imagine not many of you are going to last very long. I might lull you to sleep. But we get to, oh, also I should mention, in the description of this video, you click the show more button, you will see the links to all the lots. I've, I've added the link there for you. If you'd like to follow along, if you'd like to skip a few as well. So this is a, uh, a tonneau, which is a surprise. You don't see tonneau-shaped models at all with a presentation box, yada, yada. Uh, Awesome, really nice piece. I gotta say that contrast is good. Mark says skip this piece. <laughs> Not a fan. Interesting. I find it quite fast. It reminds me of uh, of Cartier in a way. With these crazy, crazy old school numerals. Gondolo. I mean, it's just typical nineteen thirties. But if uh, you do say skip, I think we need a we need a thumbs down or some kind of button to uh, speed up the process if you don't want to see this. So I'm gonna move on to number eight. Frank Mueller. Oh, you're right, Megan. I mean, it's just right up that alley. Okay, next up, another Patek Philippe. If I'm not wrong, this was the first annual calendar they made, or one of the first annual calendar complications. Uh, it's pretty nice. Don't know so much about this color contrast. 2009, 39 mil case, a fine, rare, elegant white gold. You're going to hear me saying that a lot because that is just that's just how it is. The descriptions of these can get a bit tiresome, as you will see. Um, so it sold for 23.9, went under for under the estimate. Not bad. Uh, uh, Amelia Clark, the what's her name, Daenerys from Game of Thrones. She wears a rose gold model of one of these, which is pretty cool. I spotted it the other day. Okay, moving on next. We've seen enough Pateks. Okay, now to AP. Now you notice there's a trend. You're going to see the the trilogy of Rolex, Patek, AP. And that's about it in most areas. You see a bit of modern Rolex, but lots of vintage Rolex, as you would expect. And the bulk is then taken up by the classic uh, Patek lines. It's a bit sad in a way because, I mean, there's so much variety out there. And you, you think to yourself, again, like I said in the beginning, this platform is such a good springboard to push other models out there. It's clear that they just want to sell the popular stuff, you know. Uh, but this is pretty great. It's a Royal Oak with a hell of an X Factor. A full-on perpetual calendar with a Tuscan dial. Okay. Presented number nine of 25 pieces, a limited edition. Okay. 173. So it went for pretty pretty high over the estimates. Add another 30% on top of that, and you get the watch. Isn't that a pleasure? Um, selling the popular stuff. It's a pity, hey, Dan, because they, I mean, Oral Bucks could literally sell ice to an Eskimo. I've been told that I could do that too. Uh, I could say uh, there's, there's a couple of people out there in the world Oral Bach is one of them, and he could pretty much sell anything to anyone. So why not just have some fun and look at the, the more peculiar stuff? There's some good options. I mean, there's some nice Omegas we'll be looking at later on, but yeah. 
uh, AP Perpetuals are pretty great. Uh, a nice APD series, is that what it's called? Thanks for that, Megan. 1997, okay. Uh, again, I'm so not versed with these numbers. I mean, reference 25820SP. You know, it sounds like English, means nothing to me. We're going to move on next, though. I thought this was stainless steel, right? I mean, God, how can you put a perpetual in a stainless steel watch? I think to myself, there's just, there's so much. No. Anyway, that's for another day. Lot number 10. Right. We've been running for, oh my God, 20 minutes already. God, what are we going to do? We're going to have to motor through these so much faster. Uh, so this is a Lunga one that we love, a rare, large, and I like this, um, rare, large, attractive platinum variant with a champagne-esque kind of dial. In a way, it kind of breaks up the subdials a little bit too much uh, you you lose you lose that asymmetry that's so gorgeous about the longer one sadly uh, but yeah 2010 it went for just over the expected price which is pretty surprising actually and this is a good litmus test to show you that people just want the popular stuff they're not interested in the outliers but i mean there's so much value and fun to be had in this um Am I in time? Is it Saturday? No, Carl, you're not in a time warp. Um, it is most definitely Friday. I felt the same way. I don't know what I was. I woke up today and thought, oh, I've got a live show tonight. What, what's going on? Uh, don't worry. You're not the only one. There's another nice reference of this, though. Next. I, I dig this. This is gorgeous. A rare and attractive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just copy and paste this every single time. Who are you? Whoever you are out there, be nice to, if you could send me an email, be nice to chat about it. Uh, this went for under the estimate, which is a travesty for what this watch is. Uh, yes, it is looky here. His uh, his surgeon, I think, one of his surgeons gave him the watch. And that's that's been quite a reputation over time. But I mean, the longer one, and this being a very bespoke, different variant, gold dial. Not not sure about how this works, though, because it does kind of ruin the allure of the, the bigger dials. Why does this highlight? Come on, don't do that to me. Anyway, you get the you get the gist. Not bad. Um, I think we're motoring pretty well. I'm definitely going to get into a rhythm, and we will be able to. Oh yes. Now this is the kind of stuff that I think we can leave on the wayside. You know, uh, it's just this just doesn't this just doesn't do it for for most of us, should I say? Red dial, diamond set. Mmm, gorgeous. And it went for over the estimate. I mean, this goes over the estimate, but the, the longer doesn't. So it's like, what? You know, it's a bit sad. It is a bit sad. You learn, this is a good learning experience for all of us. We get to learn a lot about what is popular, what should not be popular, and where the hidden gems lie. So we're going to move on from here. Thank you. Next, another highly rare, at highly rare. Got to add that adverb. An attractive, extremely well. Oh, geez. No, now we start. Now we're getting, by reference 13, we're starting to see lots of gilding going on. For 23, uh, between 10 and 20 was the estimate. Uh, diamonds for days. Con case conditions, nice. Wonderful. Uh, move on. Thank you. Now, I like this. We're going to stick on this for a while because it's just so... Uh, I don't know. How do, you, how do you best describe it? The, the Saru, it's called S-A-R-U, right? <laughs> and here we go. A spectacular and very rare yellow gold. Yeah, yeah. This is all factory set, which makes a difference. Uh, it's definitely not everyone's cup of tea. The use of diamonds ruins the watch's GMT functionality. But uh, I do kind of like the, the contrasting of the, the diamonds on the polished elements. It's just so, what? You know? Uh, good Lord, as S73 map says. There's many of you that are saying, yeah, love it, Garish, for sure. Oh, it's the work of art. What I don't like is how this watch has a green GMT Master text on the dial. It should be red or something, you know? Anyway, does the bezel turn? Yes, it does, Neferion. Showcase, good to have you here, sir. Right, so yeah, it's, it's an absolute gem. I think we can move on. Let's have a look at the shot on the wrist. Yeah, that's, that's about enough for me. Next up. Okay, now this one caught my attention. First off, you think it's steel, but it is in fact white gold, and it's the original. One of the originals, sorry, from 1982, 3700, and it's a full set, and this watch is absolutely mint. So I kind of liked this watch for that reason. Let's look, maybe just for this example, I'm going to get a full screen in, and hopefully we can enjoy 
uh, don't crash on me. That's about as good as it gets. Jeez. Oh, I feel like the download speed is going to go a little bit all over the shop, but let's try. Um, so just bear in mind, this is white gold. This is all mint, all original from 1982. Full box papers, full set. Yeah, I, I like it. I really do for, for that reason. I did think it was steel at first, but caught me by surprise. Um, but again, it's just a Nautilus. I mean, these watches, these watches all over the show. And look what it went for. I mean, what are you smoking? 693 dot 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 naught 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 excuse me add another 30 percent on top of that you're looking at someone do the numbers it's ridiculous it's another what 200 grand on top of that for the watch anyway incredibly rare maybe it is i, I really don't know it's another nautilus we're going to see lots of these paddock philippe yes um it's okay but not great yeah i mean we've seen enough of these we only on lot 15 Oh, yes. Now we're getting somewhere. Extremely rare. White gold, diamond bezel. Yeah, we're going to see a few of these during the show, which we can just motor through because I'm sure it's not up everyone's alley. Not that interesting. 900. There we go, Mark. Mark's given the spec. 900. <laughs> I mean, what? It's just like, you know, it's it's, it's white gold. It's not it's not an obtainium. It's not platinum. So, yeah, let's move away from this. This is not uh, nah, for us. What? This is another one? This is the stainless steel variant. Okay. Virtually exactly the same, but in stainless steel. And it went for 189, actually under the estimate of 200. See, they're trying, to, they're trying to milk you with these estimates. In a way, I think these estimates are trying to entice you to spend that amount. Don't you think? Is that the way of how the, the marketing works for these auction houses? I really don't know. If you'd like to let me know if that's the way. Um, 1979, 42 millimeter. That's a bit of a surprise. Uh, case, dial, bracelet, as you would expect. Condition is fantastic. That's one thing that many of these watches do show off is excellent, con oops, excellent condition. So we'll be seeing that as a consistent thing all the way through. Uh, there are some dogs that we will look at later. And uh, yeah, you'll understand why when we get there. Uh, usually the estimates are below hammer price. Really? Really? Okay. Uh, moving on next to 18, Audemars Piguet, this being 1997, this is probably one of the first models from around the time, 42 mil diamonds, what did this go for? 422,000, what? How is that even possible? This is stainless, no, it's plat. okay, platinum, fine, but jeez. So this is one of the originals from back in the day when the, the offshore was uh, just introduced. Yeah, not a, not a bad watch, but not 400 grand's worth, you know? I think uh, Mark would attest to that point. A little bit a little bit too heavy. Oh, I think, geez. I'm just going to zoom in a bit closer. Hopefully you can see this okay. I hope I'm doing an all right job so far. Is that good? I think that's a bit better. See, I'm referring to my, my smaller screen on the side to catch up. I mean, really, so, so the result, 30% of that is you're paying well over half a mil for this. Yeah, for an offshore. So yeah, as as just mentioned, it's like what what's going, what's wrong with you? Moving on next, we've seen these enough. Oh geez, now we got the gold variant. We see a trend coming across here. Lots of them, stainless steel, platinum, white gold, gold related, and it's it's what sells. Unfortunately, it's yeah. I haven't even looked at the descriptions here. A highly rare and attractive. Never seen that one before. I do kind of like these overemphasized uh, rubber seals around them not bad for 61 now what's the deal here 2006 for 61 grand there's just no there's just no con uh, consistency forbin you're doing fabulous darling forbin a wonderful person uh there's just no consistency with these sales right that's just unreal anyway moving on i don't think we won't spend much time on these because they're kind of okay this is where we start uh when we start seeing them trying to milk the audience, a highly rare and attractive stainless steel wristwatch, luminous bow tie dial, bubble back case, retailed by Bayer. It's a bubble back oyster perpetual. I mean, these these have lost a lot of their charm since uh, since the '90s, when the whole collection phase sort of toppled down on itself. And yeah, it went it went above estimate, thirty one and a half mils in diameter. That is insane. How can you even wear that watch? And the crown, yeah, that surely that's pulled out. That's not that. That is not. I, I don't. I can't believe that that's how the crown actually rests. 
But yeah, the bubble back, it's a classic, but I mean, you know what? 1935, 31 and a half millimeters in size on the wrist. S sorry. Moving on. We're going to be here for a, a while. Okay. This is an example of a seriously underrated model. Let's enjoy ourselves with this. 1935 Samurai. Yeah. That's what I love about these, uh, these boxes is you can actually look at all the specs on the right. Instead of me talking about it, you've got it all here to read while, while we're talking. Um, Tiny Blue Shirt says yes. And Rohit says, sad that the modern watch market is attracting the wrong people. Investors who have more money than sense of taste. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I have an idea for a video that I've actually worked through, trying to relate it to musical instruments in a way. That no matter how much money you spend on a musical instrument, if you can't play it, you can't play the thing, right? And it's, it's kind of a good litmus test for anyone out there. That yes, you can have the expensive equipment, but if you can't play the instrument, then... It's, it's kind of a lost cause. With watches, there's no real way to prove whether or not you're, you're an enthusiast or whether or not it's just something to put money into. You know, uh, that, that was the uh, dichotomy. So this, between 6 and 12. Now, I think as a reissue, Omega could do something like this and make an absolute killing. I mean, it's a real classic 40s-inspired piece, 38 mils in diameter. It's seriously contemporary for what it is. Tuxedo dial. I would imagine it's manual wound. And, and look at this, what they say, a large, striking, and highly attractive stainless steel two-tone sector dial. I mean, they don't even say rare on this. So, I mean, the, clearly, clearly they're biased, right? <laughs> uh, but I love the, the, the contrasting panda tuxedo dial. It's, this is unique. Beads of rice bracelets, pretty gorgeous. And Forbin saying 38 and 1941, yeah? I mean, they scaled up the sizes of these. These were made for pilots, primarily, I would imagine. And... Uh, Bring back the yeah. I mean, it's Carl. It's it's a it's a sure hit, as says someone who has the fifty seven Seamaster. It's something that we can enjoy for. I mean, remember back in the day, this this case was probably directly linked to the Longines pilots that we know, like the, the sector dials and all those models, because Omega and Longines were swapping parts around all the time. This is gorgeous. This is a watch that deserves a lot more attention in the category. And we will see a lot more as we go. Could a pilot get that crown out? Jeb, I think without gloves, maybe. I see Flip and Zipper joining us. Fantastic. And the rest of you who are joining, absolute pleasure having you here. Sit back, relax, and listen to me drone on about fine and rare and collectible models as we normally do. So this is a Longine, similar category, 1958. Uh, Pilot chronograph, you would imagine, with a telephone dial. Uh, can someone please explain that to me? Awesome movement shot. They don't mention they don't mention rare or anything on here because it's just not a part of the agenda, clearly. But yeah, just another stunning everyday wearing piece. 40, 40 G's. Pretty good. Pretty good for what it is. Love at the 10. Uh, let's have a look for when you're talking about the, the 10 o'clock position. That is so, so cool. Didn't notice that. Really deco deco ish yeah it's gorgeous there's there's some great inspirations and this is what i love about these because you do stumble across some serious little gems that uh that you just can enjoy a bit more i don't know how much we're going to talk about design during the show but yeah we, we'll try classic long jean we've seen reissues of these and i mean it's become so popular in their line so yeah gorgeous from 1958 37 and a half mil diameter nice First Daytona of the show. You're going to see lots of these. 6265. It's not a Sigma dial. Uh, let's see. Highly rare and attractive. Exceedingly, cr oh, come on. <laughs> Exceedingly crisp stainless steel chronograph. Get a, get a grip on yourself, man. Not a bad looking watch. Uh, this model, I wouldn't say, is the most attractive in the line for all of us in the vintage Daytona space. Rolex blue shirt says, yep. Um, so we can definitely scoot through some of these when we get sick and tired of them. So we look at the price. It actually went under the estimate. Notice 107 instead of 140 as the expectation. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it just goes to show not everyone has a good day. Um, yeah, we'll definitely motor through some of these. There's so many of them. We will get to the John Player specials and all of those. Here we go. Another one, Paul Newman, 6239 reverse panda. With Paul Newman dial, you know, 37 mil diameter, 1969. This one is more rare than the, the Panda model that we know. Um, but for most of us, I think it's not the most attractive of the two. It's definitely not one that, that you know, tickles our fancy, really. Uh, pretty good condition. 
yeah, we've seen we've seen enough of these to know what they are. And let's look at the price: three hundred and fifteen Gs, estimated to go between two hundred and four hundred. It's a nice looking watch, but uh, it also feels a bit more old school, a lot more old school than nineteen sixty nine when we compare it to the Panda. Of course, there is a Panda six two three nine later on. Highly rare, exceptionally well read. Blah blah. Yeah, yeah, we got the got the just there. I wouldn't turn one down. No, neither would any of us, Hans. But uh, as, I mean, what I want to try and do for, for all of you here is, can you imagine yourself wearing these watches? I think that's important. Uh, seller was happy, Megan says, yeah. Uh, can you imagine um, sitting down and wearing these pieces? Instead of just looking at the aesthetics, think more about how this watch would integrate into your daily life. Just imagine that this wasn't 300 grand and you could just enjoy them. Would it be a watch that you would choose to wear? Anyway, uh, Jeb says, I don't like Daytona. Don't worry, not the only one. Does the seller pay fees? Squiggly says, I do not know. Someone please tell him or her. Okay, this is more fun. A Turnograph, hmm. the precursor to the Submariner, the GMT. This watch deserves to be in lights for what it is. 6202, an extremely attractive and well-preserved stainless steel. Yeah, yeah, with a revolving bezel. Hmm, never heard of that before. So this this watch came what 1954, literally the, the same the same year that the Submariner was reduced, right? Uh, reduced, introduced. Uh, Black Bear 58 mentioned 35 millimeter diameter. That's insane. Still, we gotta love coin edging, and a honeycomb dial. It's beautiful. It's a really stunning example. And this is when we can get to enjoy some elements of the vintage pieces it's not it's not for everyone but these little quirks do make them a lot more enjoyable i mean where the oyster perpetual is printed on the dial get out of my oh. right i'm gonna have to i'll move to this one where oyster perpetual is, is printed on either side i don't know what they were smoking when they did this but it's just it just adds something a bit more to the the usual that we see and again this model went for 65 which i think is this watch next to the daytonas deserves so much more attention. How much more significant is this watch to the Daytona? I mean, really? If it wasn't for the Turnograph, no Submariner, no GMT. Professional Rolex would be nothing to what it is today if this watch didn't exist. Pretty sad. And we also remember the Milgas that came from this as well. Honeycomb dial, yeah, stunning. Also enjoy the pencil hands. I mean, if I was recreating a Rolex of any vintage sort, pencil styled hands, no Mercedes hand, it's a gem do really like it. Here's a good example of a watch that deserved to go for a lot more. I would say a hundred more than what it actually sold for. Uh, it's sad. It really is. This is an example of a super hype watch that deserves to be looked at for what it is. Come on, collectors, do your homework. Next, 226, a Breguet. Incredibly well-preserved rare yellow gold. Oh, they don't say they don't say attractive on this, so I guess they must be biased. Circa 1960, 34.5 mil. That's probably the reason why they didn't say attractive. Went for 100. I actually watched this live. And no, not bad. Not a bad looking model. I don't think it really screams. When you look at the dial, it doesn't really scream Breguet. Again, if you'd like to get me in the chat, uh, I'm constantly looking at the at the chat. So tag me there and I'll be able to see what's going on a lot, a lot quicker if you want to ask me a question. The, the case says Breguet, the dial, nah, not so much. 34.5 mils, Yeesh, that is tiny. Yeah, not bad. We're gonna see a few more of these as we motor through. 27, mm. 6263, highly rare, attractive, pristine. That's it, that's it. So we've got hang tags, pretty nice, full, full set, which is a bonus. And the condition is really good too. It's funny, I mean, all of these watches were unworn, you know, it's like, where do they find them? 1986, estimate between 80 and 160, and it went for 170. Now, I much prefer this version of the, the Panda variant with the, the black bezel, a little bit better contrast. And the Champagne Dial, I've actually handled this exact watch before. It's pretty good. It's not bad. It's not something that I would want to wear. I mean, it's that's again, put yourself into the shoes of would you actually want to wear this watch if it was yours? Disregarding price, just think aesthetics, just think daily wearing. And there's just too many conflicting elements on this piece for me. And mention about the domed crystal, Jimmy says, yeah. What would you call this? I feel like it's more of a boxed, a box crystal since it doesn't arc. But uh, yeah, good example. We're gonna see more of these. 
Thomas saying no, Blue Shirt saying I'd wear it. I, I, we need to have some kind of call sign in the chat for what you would, if you would, wear this. Maybe a thumbs up or a, I don't know, a one or a, a two or a... Um, and Megan's saying it's a beautiful 66.3, fetching a great price, proving full set pays off. I mean, of course, it's, it's, it makes such a difference. It just, it just adds the, the validity to what you're buying. Remember, vintage is a minefield if you don't know what you're doing. And these kinds of watches get tampered with all the time. So in a sense, you're paying that extra premium with these watches, knowing that you're going to be getting something that is fully legitimate, that's been triple checked. Of course, Phillips and Sotheby's, et cetera, have made uh, big mistakes in the past with all sorts. But uh, on the whole, yeah, 170, estimate between 80 and 160. I mean, that is a lot for what this watch is. I think I was handling one that was something like 60 grand back in the day. I don't think it was full set though. So it just shows, just shows how much of a difference it makes. Yes or no, Mark says. Yeah, Y or N, that's very good. So if you can comment Y or N for these, I think when we start pausing on certain models, that'll be nice. Okay, here's another stunning example. This is pre-Daytona, uh, 1945. This, I would imagine, is pretty much the watch that the prisoners of war got in the um, the Great Escape. Isn't this the Great Escape watch? <laughs> Nick's saying, yeah, we're on now. So the reason why we're going now is because half the auction has happened and half is happening tomorrow. Why Phillips decided to choose a Friday? Je ne sais pas. Weiß nicht. Ich weiß nicht. I don't know. Doesn't matter. We're going to just motor. If this was happening on Saturday, the, the first half, I would be doing it on Saturday. In a way, we're looking at the first half at the prices they're going for, and then the second half we'll be seeing unsold. There are some beautiful examples, 1016 and a 1655 that is absolutely incredible. So yeah, this I would imagine is the great escape model. If you don't know that story, um, if you've seen the film with Steve McQueen and Richard Attenborough and all those guys, uh, the great escape was tunneling under a prisoner of war camp. And they used the chronograph to time their their shifts, basically, to, to dig. And uh, there's a great story. I mean, look it up. The Great Escape Rolex, if you're on Google. Many saying no. Some saying yes. I would wear this. I think it's it's not a Daytona. It's got a bit more uh, unique, avant-garde, we could say, to its, its aesthetic. Telemeter scale, tachymeter. This is how you can typically tell that it's a watch from the 40s. I mean, the dial layout is, it gives it away. Um, and, I mean, it's sold for under. The, the true estimate, 75. So, I mean, it's like, you know, sad. Moving on next to 29. Oh, come on. Now we're talking. Universal Genève. If this watch was recreated today, it would be a hype watch. I think people would go mad for this model. 1971. I don't know so much about 36 millimeters in size. But they use very twice in this description. Come on. That is just lazy. This watch deserves a lot more attention. I mean, it is, oh, that is beautiful. Really, really is beautiful. It's one of the prettiest watches of this auction, I think. I truly believe. You have just such an excellent use of colors. Turquoise, dark blue. The way the subdials are divided up by this, this rectangular format, it is so clean. It's so easy to use as a chronograph. I think one of the best selling points with a chronograph is one that you can read the time and use for its purpose very well. And I mean, yeah, I had to zoom in a bit to get a good look. Notice the, the liar lugs on the sides. We do imagine to see from models like the Speedmaster, pump pusher case. Yeah, this kind of watch I would bid for if it was me, a part of these auctions. So what, between 20 and 40 and it went for 35. I mean, whoever got this, they did a pretty good job. Um, and the strap's also pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Not bad, got to say. Pretty unique. Um, and some are, won't wear it. Interesting, hey? I, I, like, I like how this divides opinion. That's what makes these discussions great. There's so much diversity inside the typical Rolex, Patek, Omega, sorry, AP affair. Uh, we're going to learn where the other variety lies. Even the seconds is in red. Uh, the second, the second's hand, yeah. I was wondering, maybe the the subdials, the subdial hands should also be in red or something, a bit more, a bit more of a boost. Still, legibility wise, uh, it's just great, really cool. Thirty six mil diameter, unfortunately, a little bit small. Moving on next to thirty. Right now, I was watching this live. I don't get the appeal very much. <sighs> I'm, I'm sure they made quite a few of these. 
circa 1950-38 mil. Of course, it's a it's a full calendar variant of a Rolex. We don't see calendar Rolexes very much. Uh, thank you, Blue Shirt. Mentioning, please give me a thumbs up. You don't have to, really. This is all free will. I'm definitely not asking for any kind of attention. If you don't want to be a part of the show, it's fine. Uh, I just thought it'd be a nice time for us to kick back and enjoy ourselves and, and look at, have a bit of have a bit of dry humor and comedy for a change. So this, I, I don't understand the, the real appeal of this model. I would imagine because it's a calendar, because it says Rolex on the dial, yes, that's that's where the interest is. But I mean, look at the price it went for. 730, what? For a 38, I mean, 38 mil diameter is quite impressive for its age. But I mean, no, no, it's just, it's not for me. I wouldn't want to wear it. But it's, uh, yeah, case looks flat. <laughs> Jean-Claude, good to have you here, Jean-Claude Beaver. Uh, I'm sure you were in the in the aisles watching the show. Right, so I think we can move on from this. It's cool. It's it's okay, but it's just not... Mm. Point of date. It's funny how Rolex was doing this back in the day. Good Lord, bargain. Yeah, I mean, Mark just did the calculation. 950. He put the premium on top. Right, moving on next. Oh, geez. Now we get to these modern Pateks, and I think we can motor through some of these too because... Uh, a lot of them are pretty samey, similar. There's some good examples, but I mean, these are all watches that you can buy in the stores. What, 40 grand it went for, uh, 2015 model. I, I don't think it's the most attractive Patek out there. There's so many more. So I think we will move away from some of these. I do kind of like the clean aesthetic of the Sector-esque dial. Uh, Sam Ray saying, would wear it. Six identical ES blue shirt, for sure. Uh, okay, we're gonna gonna move. This is this is. Uh, there's a couple of these. Okay, now we're getting in. Five nine eight zero. We knew this was coming up next. Uh, we've seen enough of these before. Rare and attractive. This ain't rare. Uh, device of whether or not it's attractive for a lot of people out there. The pushes on these these nautili, I wish were integrated into the shoulders just to clean it up a bit. Uh, you know, the tobacco dial's nice. I do like the rose gold and brown, but yeah, it's just, we've seen enough of these. Estimate between 40 and 80, went for 75. Okay. 47 minutes and we've, we're on 33. Jeez, like, what am I going to do? 3,800 J. Okay. 1987, 37 and a half mils. Uh, 50 grand it went for. Pretty cool. I don't like this, how these older watches had steel clasps and it's a solid gold piece. I guess in a way it adds for the rigidity of the metal because it's being operated all the time. But um, yeah, you know, very elegant and refined yellow gold. Uh, yeah, we can we can definitely motor. We've seen enough of these already. <laughs> here is whoever mentioned here for the Patek Philippe enamel lighter. This went for 52 grand. God, 52 grand for a lighter with a conjar on the on the top. I just don't know, man. So I think this is one of the outliers of the show. Might have to do part two, part three, Sam Ray. <laughs> it's great. So, okay, I'll admit, I do love the colors here. I, f I feel very much like it's, you know, kind of Egyptian scarab inspired from, you know, ancient Egypt, where they would often use emeralds to, to decorate scarab, uh, what am I saying? Scarab jewelry, et cetera, et cetera. I see Megan is just wanting to, that's great. Megan, I think you'll be the one to keep me on track because I'm going to get a little bit, a little bit uh, tongue tied with a lot of these. Flip and Zippo, yes, he's in, um, of all, Flip and Zippo would be interested in this. Uh, only 52.9, so add 30% on top of that, and you got it. Uh, this is not this is not actually emerald, I don't think. I don't know. Moving on. It's it's enamel or something. Okay, another example of a day date that I think we can probably miss. These these Kunjar dials are going for such crazy amounts today, and uh, yeah, it's just, it's not everyone's cup of tea. These are becoming very popular on the gray market, and people are talking about them all the time. Uh, so yeah, 1980, between 20 and 40, it went for 35. Oops, next. Another Patek, this is a reference 35 millimeter case, a very rare and superbly well-preserved, come on. A uh, question from Forbin saying, was the Kingshut exhibit touring the world in 1975? May explain the lighter design. I don't know. I really, don't. I wasn't around back then, but uh, maybe, possibly, $52. Yeah, Megan, you're gonna be on fire, I think. 
how many coffees has everyone had? I think. Can someone comment in the chat how many coffees you've had today? I would like to know. I will start. That's my number. It's impressive. It's pretty. It's pretty decent. It's not the best, but uh, yeah. So this was an award, lighting gas company. Mm -hmm. Ah, we can move on next. Thirty-five millimeters, nineteen fifty-five. It went for over the estimates. Now they can they can spruik these for days, but there's just so much more variety out there. I mean, really, Mark has six. Underachieving has five. I think many lose count. Seventy-three math is at two. Okay, that's good. Uh, another Patek Philippe. This went for eighty-one thousand. Thirty-six mil diameter. I mean, that's that's enough to deter a lot of people. Nineteen fifty-one. Highly rare and attractive. Extremely well preserved. Got a got a gilded blue shirts had two uh, michael's had five megan's had eight and four i can't believe that megan if that i mean you should be running up the walls right now andreas six you know we're all we're all addicted we're all insomniacs you know yeah so this is uh, nice next Okay, I do dig the Breguet numerals on this reference. This is pretty gorgeous. This is kind of like the precursor to the, the 5170 that we know pretty well. Uh, I do love the lugs. I think they did a great job here. The turned in regions at the base. For 1949, 35 mil diameter, an extremely rare and incredibly well preserved. That was just a direct, a direct copy paste. Um, we, I don't think, oh, Sam Ray saying he would wear it. Hmm. I mean, it's it's a nice piece. I don't know so much about the gold on gold on gold, but uh, yeah, oh, here's a good example of the dial for us to look at. 1949. Yeah, it's an old workhorse. Lugs are sweet. I think of all the the lugs do make quite a nice quite a nice touch. So, gonna move on from this to the next. The thing is, they can take so many inspirations from these models and put them into others. I think what's important to mention about 1950s. <clears throat> who can afford these pieces? Very few, I'm afraid to say. When we look at 1950s pieces, I do want to focus on this a bit, that the term beautification is used a lot more when they designed these. You know, they were looking back to deco-inspired elements uh, when they were bringing up these models. This is a gorgeous. How much? 4.9? Come on. What? What? Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to hit the coffee. This is, uh, this is, right, 1954, 36 mil diameter. I wear it comfortably on your pinky finger. Um, so I was, I was saying before I was rudely interrupted by myself, beautification was a very big thing in the 50s. We see how they got a lot more experimental and creative with their lugs and, and all of that. And sadly, that's lost today with what we see on the marketplace. Uh, and notice, just notice the lugs. When you look at 1950s watches, 1940s, you'll see that the lugs are a bit more stylized and they have fun. Sadly, everything is just, yeah, I got to move away. I can't stand that price. What? Do you see what that says on the dial? Doxa. Corn de vache lugs. Okay. Perfect example. Here we go. Beautification. Corn de vache. Uh, literally meaning horns of the cow. Uh, you can see that, the scarab aesthetic. We are talking about scarabs a second ago. We go all over the place when we discuss watches. Uh, this is a doxa. How cool is that? 1944. Yeah, I would totally wear this. I mean, that's just great. It's just, what? Doxa of all brands? <laughs> I mean, there are many doxa lovers out there. Here is an example of a watch. 1940s, this is what they were making. You've seen this on Chrono 24, right? it says... Yeah, I mean, what? This is when it gets fun. Estimate between two and four, and it went for two, seven. I mean, just because it doesn't have the name behind it. Uh, again, collectors, they're not looking at this kind of stuff. They're looking at what sells, and that's it. Doxa, but it's not orange. Exactly, it's pink. Uh, pretty good point, though. They got to love that 12 on the dial, too. Go away. It's a bloody drop-down thing. Okay, moving on to lot 41. Another freaking doxa. Check this out. A large and extremely attractive stainless steel. Not rare. No, it's not rare. Between 8 and 16, and it sold for 21.4. How does that feel? Uh, you got it. When, you, when you don't include rare on the description, you might even get a better sale than you expected. Hat tip for you guys. Uh, circa 1950, 38 mil case, salmon dial. Now, we got to love salmon dials. 
Dr. Orange is ugly. Yeah, I mean, we could definitely debate that for days. Uh, I, I got to love, I love doxes in yellow and orange. It's what they were about back in the day. We're not going to see many salmon dials, I don't think. But uh, yeah, here's an example. Antique magnetic. You can see this is directly out of the 1940s with that telemeter and all those scales on it. Yeah, not bad, actually, Megan says. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. That, that leather strap, though. Come on. I mean, it's probably 18 mils. You don't need to shove it on. No one likes force when it comes to applying leather straps onto a watch. Pretty cool. Moving on to salmon dials off a show off, Brickland. I mean, I did a video about salmon dials. Maybe if I remember, I'll link it in the corner of the screen for everyone to look at. Um, it was the end thing back in the 30s and the 40s. The, the color pink, that whole, that whole orange pink tone was, was very popular. And now it's just become a way to market your watch as something with an <laughs> an x factor uh jimmy mark they're all saying no they're all saying no and i i, I get you I, I understand a mavado extra an extraordinary oversized pink oval shaped from 19 geez check out the 1920 and it's 45 millimeter size that's crazy for 32 grand good god i do love the step lugs but but oh looks like it got squashed <clears throat> i see many are saying no i think we will uh move on i like i do like the dial if it wasn't oblong moving on another patek here we go again with the beautification question i do enjoy saying that word beautification and here is an example look at those lugs brands do not do not try to be creative like this anymore sadly um, and there's just so much to take in here i mean i look at this and think the more contemporary brands out there try to do this with their movements. Uh, you know, some, some cases are experimenting in areas, and this is just so out there when you think about it. 34 mils, 1953, perfect watch for the pinky finger. Uh, I, I'm guessing this was a retailer back in the day, retailed by, by Frechero. I don't know. A fine and very attractive. La, la, la. 25 grand was estimated to go between 20 and 40. So, uh, yeah. No contrast, yeah. So, so some are saying yes, some are saying no. That's cool. Thirty-four mils in diameter, though. Yeesh. Uh, it's good. I think I said hi to you, Eric. Nice to have you here, Eric. Right. Oh no. What happened here? What? Five hundred grand. What? Oh. Extremely rare and mm -hmm. eighteen carat. Severely oxidized on one side. Uh, I would imagine the person probably wore it on, you know, maybe maybe it was a scientist who wore this watch and worked often by a Bunsen burner. Yeesh, that's that's sad. I don't like it when gold goes like this, when it tarnishes so badly. Uh, yeah, 36 mil diameter, 1946. By the way, when we get to lot 176, please stay for the ending because you're going to laugh your head off. It was actually mentioned in the chat in the very beginning. Yeah, so not bad, but uh, I mean, just sad when the gold goes this way. I guess it doesn't have, wouldn't have box or papers. I mean, 1946, what the hell? But for 500 grand, what? Okay, uh, I think I've swallowed my pride there. Let's move on next. Someone's saying yes, rare and attractive. Sean, does they say yes, they do. I mean, it's like copy paste. Go for it, boy. Extremely rare. You have to add the, the adverb on top of it with multi-scale. So again, you see the dials inspired by the 40s. It's all, uh, you know, telemeter scales, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Oh, oh, right. So this is essentially the, um, the James Bond big crown, Sean Connery. We had a little bit of a tribute to him last weekend. Uh, 6536, not a 6538, so it's an earlier reference. 1959, 37.5 mil diameter. Estimated to go between 150 and 300, and it went for 189. I mean, hello. That Daytona just sold for 500. That sold for 500, and this sold for 189. I don't get it. I, is, what, is there something wrong with me? Or am I the only one who's not understanding this? Uh, why so cheap? I mean, Jimmy, putting cheap in quotations, I agree. I don't get it. What is wrong with this watch? It's, I mean, look at the serifs on that. Oh, it's stunning. This is what I don't understand. This is the the epitome of what we would later see from the Submariner. I mean, it's it's very much, uh, It's we haven't reached the point of 200 meters yet. I think the 6538 is when it got the 200 meter dial to it. Uh, 
this is still 100 meters. So uh, yeah, you can't go diving too deep with this watch. I mean, 100 meters. If anyone can dive 100 meters, I'd be impressed. Uh, but in general, highly rare, exceptionally well. And now we see they're gilding the lily here, but the watch didn't go for the expected, ex the expected price. So sharp case. I mean, look at the lugs. The lugs are absolutely fantastic. Big crown. It's beautiful. Here's another example. Like the Turnograph, why doesn't this watch get more attention? Come on, Magic Mouse. Work with me here, darling. Uh, I think we're calibrated okay. It's stunning. Glass dial. What, what can you say wrong about this piece? It's one of the starters. I mean, 1959, it's directly in line with the Seamaster that I showed you in the beginning. Um, Enzo's saying no. The, the issue is the size of the watch, I would imagine. But again, if you want something that is just a piece of history, hmm, it's a goodie. Moving on next to, I mean, look at this. Holy cow, look what it went for. 113 this ended up going for. Have I misaligned? Hold on. I'm going to try and get this centered for you all. Sorry. Uh, I get a bit carried away with the magic mouse as a mind of its own. Here's another gorgeous tuxedo dial. A very attractive, rare, and oversized. Hmm. 1941, 38.5 mil case. Oh, this is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Contrast for days. You can tell the time. You can use the chronograph. I mean, look at that. Look at the condition of the case back and everything. 1941. You can use this watch as a daily piece, and the, the contrast is just there. Between 40 and 80, it was expected to go for, went for 113. Omega, if I ever get in contact with you, this is what we're going to be talking about. These kinds of references we need to see again because they will sell extremely well. We're talking coaxial movements. I mean, the 3861, throw that in there. Golden, 1941, ahead of its time, stunning. Superb condition, it looks modern, exactly. I mean, this is a good, a good, test a good telltale sign on whether or not this watch deserves to be recreated does it look like a watch that is modern today and yeah, i fully agree it does yeah come on omega bring it back as we're saying be nice if a rep from omega oh we're back to the daytonas uh, 6265 inside case back stamp 6263 hmm this is a nice looking model i do like it. 1983 37 mil between 100 and 200 and went for 150 Pretty good. Box papers. What does it come with? Hang tag. Pretty good. Okay. Full set. Not bad. Really not bad at all. I think this inverted panda is, is appealing in many ways. I also enjoy that the screw down pushes and the size and scale should be, um, Humaitra is saying should be the new Omega DeVille. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Forbin saying we're also jaded seeing Daytonas. Yeah. I mean, it's not something that whets everyone's appetite as we know, as many of us know. It's a Franken watch. It probably is, Freddy. I mean, that, that's it, right? Yeah, that's this piece. Yeah, they're good, but we've seen so many of them. It's it's funny that the repetitive nature of seeing these watches does tire us out, I think. And it's a full set, Megan says. Yeah, I mean, pretty good. 150. I think it could have gone for a lot more. Uh, but we're going to carry on. Oh, here we go. Hello, darling. So, references is uh, lot number 48. 6542. This is the Pussy Galore, right? The Pussy Galore. I'll say that many times. I must be dreaming. Now, notice this watch hasn't sold. Uh, so I guess it didn't meet its reserve. Ooh. Okay. So between 120 and 240 was the estimate. I mean, look at the condition of that. Baker Light, the case is brand spanking new. A lot of yes, everyone says. I mean, yeah, you can't deny. This is the, the real precursor to the GMT. It's the one that, that started the trend. The, the watch condition is fantastic. Look at that case. How do they manage to get the case looking as sharp as that? Um, I haven't even said hi to Thomas. It's great to have you here, Thomas. Sorry, I haven't missed you. The chat's been going ballistic today. Uh, and so many more of you. Spanish, John, everyone's saying beautiful example. It is stunning. I mean, put the Daytonas aside. That's just boring. This is where the real fun lies, I think. Yeah. So what do they describe it as? Highly rare, extremely well-preserved, attractive. I can agree with this description. Uh, they've mentioned rare and attractive again, but I, I can agree with this. Uh, nice. And it obviously didn't meet its, its reserve, so it didn't sell, unfortunately. Maybe it will go up again tomorrow. Who knows? 1958. Yeah. I mean, this is one of the best, ladies and gents. It is a, it's a gorgeous model. Really is stunning. And I'm sure many 
many are uh, lusting after a piece like this. Going to carry on, moving to number 49. Uh, right, another 1955, 36 mil diameter, between 15 and 30,000 went for 21,000. Notice they don't say rare and attractive in this one, so I guess they, they didn't have high hopes for it. Uh, it's funny. It's so funny. I do enjoy these listings a lot. I do find them entertaining. I hope you're kind of you're kind of having a good time. Um, highly collectible piece. Yeah, Megan, I agree. The, I mean, how can you not? It's just, oh, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Okay, moving on. I do like the lugs here. Uh, the, the stepping lugs, 1955. Okay, next. Okay, okay. This one, am I just seeing something here? Did the, did the Patek sell? Yes, it did. This example, number 50, fine and very attractive, 150 to 300 grand, and it did not sell. It didn't meet its reserve, uh, unfortunately. And this is a gorgeous example. I mean, we've seen that we saw a steel variant that looked almost exactly the same as this a second ago. And this is great. The oxidation hasn't completely wrecked half the case. I do like that turquoise strap with it. That's a good pairing. They did a nice job. Yeah, but I mean, it's a uh, telemeter scale. You can imagine 1950, 36 mil diameter, pre-Daytona. Reservation not met, unfortunately. So uh, yeah, we might see this again tomorrow. Who knows? Has Russell just joined us? Russell, you're going to have a good time. So uh, as you said, you'd be joining at 11. It is 11. Okay. What? Are you seeing what I'm seeing here? A 765 Breitling. So this is a 765 AVI that we know. Between eight and twelve is the estimate. It goes for twelve six. Underappreciated, undervalued. And there we go. Nineteen sixty six, and it's a forty two mil diameter watch. You could wear this today. I don't get it, eh? I just don't understand how some watches can get such a premium, and others no. That's you'd also call this a big eye, right? Because of the the, the large sub dial at the at the three o'clock position. Yeah, man, it's it's sad to see that these pieces just don't get the kind of attention that they deserve. But I guess, you know, some people just want to, uh, <laughs> it's hipster. Uh, you guys are great. You come for the watches and stay for the comments. That's what makes these shows a joy. So yeah, I hope everyone who's watching currently, all of you who are watching, look at the comments because that's where the fun lies. Uh, my droning voice is definitely not the reason why you're here. Uh, the bezel rotates. Yes, it does. Look here. Uh, pilot chronograph from back in the day. I imagine it was issued to French military. Not bad. Sad it doesn't come with any reference papers and all the rest. Okay, moving to 52. Here's another example. Uh, large and rare and attractive. Oh, come on. Why do they repeat the same thing over again? Anyway, between 10 and 20, it went for 15. I mean, this is the, nav this is the real precursor Navi timer in many ways. I kind of like that they've engraved it there. 1966, 40.5 mil diameter. Too busy. I mean, it just the Navi timer, as we know, is just everything in your face at once. It's definitely not for everyone. Oh, Russell said, watch for the watch the auction live now for the horological version. Too kind of you, Russell. I, I flitted in and out of watching it today. Uh, it got a little bit tiresome when there were phone problems, and yeah, it got a bit got a bit much. Uh, that's what my Tinder profile says. What did I say, Jeb? Can you repeat what I mentioned? In your face. It's a little bit too much. I don't know. I'm on my fourth coffee. Give me a break. Okay. Um, Navi timer. We've seen enough. Okay. Leonidas. Here's a good example. Between five and 10, and it went for 13, eight. Highly rare, extremely large, attractive lacquer dial. It's quite nice. Um, do enjoy a domed acrylic. 1950, and it's 40.5 mil diameter. I got to say, when you contrast black with rose gold and gold, it is stunning, and it makes it such a legible watch to use. And again, the, the bonus about a chronograph is that you need to be able to tell the time, but also use it for its base function. And I think this does a very good job at showing you how legible a watch can be using contrasting colors and materials. How am I speaking so well today? I don't know. Uh, extremely large, really. Did they say that on the, on the description? <laughs> extremely large at 40 mils in diameter. I mean, come on. That that's a bit peculiar. Why would they describe it like that? We've seen oversized already. This is not. It's a, it's a bloody pilot chronograph. I mean, why would you? Anyway, carrying on. Nice looking piece. I think most of us would enjoy. Jung Hans Max Bill. I would agree. I see lots of 
uh, Longines and, and Breitling in this, actually. Uh, those dials, this looks almost exactly like a Breitling Longines kind of dial. You know that everything was assembled from parts bins back in the day. Yeah, and, and large from 1950, Russell says. I mean, we've seen 38 mils from the 40s and examples. I don't know why they decided, okay, now it's time to say large. Uh, yeah, do love that crystal. Moving on to 54, Hoya Otavia. Can't go wrong with an Otavia. Did not meet its reserve. 1970, this is the Joe Cipher, as I'm sure we'd imagine. Uh, made This should have been on the wrist of Steve McQueen, by the way, when we were watching uh, Le Mans in 1970. Uh, speaking of which, the Steve McQueen Le Mans uh, Monaco is going to be going up for auction very soon, which is nuts. I'm so excited to see what that goes for. Um, but this is the precursor. Is it a caliber 11? Dare I scroll down to look at the description? Nah. Cool looking watch. Definitely not for everyone, but it is the epitome of that era, 1970. Exactly at the same time when the Monaco was popular and everyone was looking at it. Um, and if you don't know, Josefa was the actual driver of this car in the 70s. He was a Porsche test driver, I think. He also raced the, uh, the 917 at Le Mans. Absolutely beautiful. It was a flat 12, right? God. Stunning machine. Absolutely stunning machine. I think Russell would agree. So yeah, not a watch for everyone, but it is a classic when we look at uh, the timeline. Did not need to reserve, unfortunately. Most of the cars crashed in the movie. I mean, I know, it's crazy. The uh, I loved seeing the development of the, nine, the 917 and how they had to include downforce on the back. It's all because of the tails of those cars. They just didn't have enough downforce to keep them stuck. Right, so now we're looking at a Really stunning example. 1675, inside case back stamped, 1172. So I'm guessing that's when it was serviced, or is that just its creation? Highly rare. Okay, stop right there. Highly rare. Please, get over yourself. How many 1675s are there in the world? <laughs> I mean, come on. Attractive, yeah, yeah, okay. So 1675, gorgeous case condition. It might have been polished once. But the, this, it's a really good example here. Bezel is clean, mint, the dial, the, the hands. We know how to check most vintage pieces. Dancing created second quarter 72. Thank you. Thank you. Between 8 and 12, and it went for 15. That's very reasonable. That is very reasonable. This doesn't have a box and papers, sadly. Maybe it is a replacement bezel. You could be right. Again, I'm, I, I ain't no vintage aficionado here. <laughs> I'm just explaining what I'm seeing. Uh, so please, uh, there are many more. Megan is one of them who knows her vintage pieces especially. She could give us a full run through of these. Um, yeah, bracelet signed. Really nice example. The condition of the case is gorgeous. We'll be seeing this very often. <laughs> Not highly rare. Uh, yeah, Thomas, it's just why? Highly rare. Uh, okay, here's another goodie. So we call this the Monte Carlo, right? Yes. Between 12 and 18 grand, and it went for 17. Tudor Monte Carlo is a, is a gem, I think. Very underrated. Uh, 1975, 39 mil case. I mean, anyone who enjoys an orange hand. Uh, it, this is just an example of that classic 70s era piece. They didn't, they didn't know what they were doing. They were in a, a very peculiar creative space back in the day. This watch, of course, competing with watches like the Monaco and the Ortavia. Tudor makes some cool stuff. Don't know so much about the Cyclops on the crystal at the 6 o'clock position, but yeah, overall, contrast for days. You can tell the time very easily. And uh, yeah, it's just a fashionable, interesting-looking chronograph of the time. Was this ever reissued, Rob asks? Uh, no. Yes, they did. Um, they called it the, the Heritage, the Tudor Heritage Chronograph. Look it up. I think they made it in 42 mils. <clears throat> I'm asking my fisherman's friend for help. Uh, it might help me get through this a bit more. The throat is starting to dry up. How long have we been going? 73 minutes, 56 lots. We're doing well. We are motoring pretty well. And Megan's saying expensive at the price. No, does it have, it looks like it has a certificate. No, no box or anything else. Um, guarantee. I mean, that's a bonus. It is pretty expensive. I don't know what these were running back in the day. Were they Lemonias or Valjus or... Someone let me know. Uh, no, because of the Cyclops. Yeah, definitely. It's divisive. Great contrast, though. Love those colors. Moving on to 57. Uh, we can give these a skip unless you want to enjoy these green dials. Malachite dial. 
Malachite's a cool stone, but uh, again, these are becoming so popular on the gray market. People are just spruiking them for days. Question of whether or not they will remain popular, undecided. Between 20 and 40,000, and it went for 37.8. Wunderbar. Next. Oh. <clears throat> oh. How much? Between 30 and 50, and it went for 81. Add another 30% on top of that, ladies and gents. Someone actually bought this watch. Hmm. Well, you know, it's got to be entertaining. I mean, this is the entertain. <laughs> I love the chats are great. Stay for the chats, everyone. This is when it gets this is when it gets good. Mother of Pearl dial, baguette diamond inlays. I do like how they've they've divided them up a bit. Gives it a bit more visual complexity. But someone bought this for 82 grand. I add another thirty percent on top of that, and you're looking well over a hundred grand for this. Yikes! Twenty seventeen is not even new. I mean, not even old. What am I saying here? <laughs> uh, oof! As Ashley says, yeah. I mean, it's just next. Oh, and now we're looking at something absolutely beautiful. So I mean, like you know. Ah, uh, right. So sixteen eighty. How funny is that that we just look at something that we all kind of repulse, and we look at this and go, okay. Yes, yes, I like this. <laughs> there were parts bins. Yes, uh, Megan says I love Nixons. I adore Nixons. They are my absolute favorite. Now we look at something here. This looks like a matte dial, matte dial, sixteen eighty blue on blue. I know Blue Shirt Buddha definitely approves. Look at those colors. There's something so special about old gold and the way it has this. This flat matte brush effect to it. Yeah, so between 35 and 70, and it went for 88. Now, on a bracelet, I would accept. No bracelet, I'd be very disappointed. But i got to say, those colors are gorgeous. Nipple dial, the condition looks fantastic. Case probably has been polished once. <laughs> An ultra rare and attractive. You see there is a trend coming along here. Every single damn time. Whoever does this again, you don't need to. You don't need to write these descriptions in. Just, just maybe bullet point: ultra rare, bullet point: gold, bullet point: special matte blue dial. Done. None of this descriptive rubbish. Right, eighty-eight G's. No bracelet, unfortunately. But gotta say, those colors are very expensive, as Megan says. Yeah, those colors make it very expensive. A little bit too much. Be nice to have a bracelet on this piece. What happened to the bracelet? Absolutely no idea. Lost. Hmm. 6263, 14 carat. 14 carat means that it was made for the American market, I think. No, no, no. 14 carat chronograph, 18 carat bracelet, which means something else, doesn't it? Does this mean that this is a Franken watch in a way? Uh, so between, oh my God, between 70 and 100, and I went for 207, 208,000. Add 30% on that, ladies and gents. <clears throat> That's a lot of cashola. So it was serviced in 2017, I think. That's nice. 1978, the condition is stunning. I mean, you can't deny it. It's, it's a spectacular watch when you look at how well it's been restored in many, in many ways. The riveted bracelet. I mean, we're talking about a solid gold bracelet here. That's not solid at all. I mean, it's all just assembled from parts so the fact that it looks as good as it does the case flanks are really sharp the contrast is nice excuse me my nose is a bit uh it's this damn dry air in the room um now that's how they they came from rolex i mean so this oh really thank you megan so this is how they did come from the brand back in the day so 14 carat watch and an 18 carat bracelet I don't get that. I remember I remember seeing or reading somewhere that the 14 carats were intended for the American audience and the 18 carats were for the European side. And uh, I've never known that they've, they've mixed and matched. Maybe they just kept the bracelets consistent at 18 carat all the way. Do not know. Does Philips have a Theosaurus? Hans, that's a good point. Maybe someone who's watching could send a, th a big Theosaurus to their office and say, use better words. <laughs> That'd be good. That'd be a good joke. 208 grand the next watch that's coming up i think is rare and attractive rare and attractive god that's so funny uh, it's not going to stop 73 math it's going to be continuing all the way through the show every single watch i think the john player special is next now this 
This is nice. This is really nice. Not just saying, I, th I think this actually won the Philips show for me uh, five months ago when we did this. I, I just love the contrast on this piece. Okay, so this bar, the fact that it's a Rolex, bar the fact that it went for <clears throat> 780 and just look at it for its 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 aesthetics. Uh, the black dial, the contrasting gold subs, the black hands, and how well they work with the sub dials. It's an excellent chronograph. The gold hands as well. Time telling, piece of cake. So yeah, I mean, it's not the best condition model though, but there are very few of these out there. I don't know so much if I would enjoy oxidation on a watch that I've just bought for seven hundred and eighty. Add 30% on top of that if anyone is doing the calculations, and there's your actual price. But it went pretty under the estimate of 1.2. Wow. They, they kind of got a steal for this. Uh, look at the hands. They've aged pretty well. So whoever got this kind of won it for a steal because I do know that these go for in the millions, right? Um, some joining us, AMG, nice to have you here. We are on lot 60. I can't believe we've been running for 80 minutes. I think we can actually do this today. Uh, six out of 10. This is this is like the watch Paul Newman went out to dinner with. Yeah, for sure. Peruvian? Is this a Peruvian-issued model? I don't know. I really don't know. Don't ask me that kind of stuff. 6241. They call this the JPS, John Player Special, because it has those contrasting colors that reminds you of the, the Formula One cars and that livery that they used back in the day. It's nice. Really nice looking piece. Um, Forbin says that 64.1 has depth to it in the way the inner trapped ring is. And I mean, hell of a good point. I should have mentioned that a bit more, that when it comes to owning watches, it's nice to have the bog stock standard stuff. But when you start looking at the real character of some of these pieces, things like depth to dial makes a huge impact on your wearing experience. You tilt the watch in a way and you can see so much more information, so much more visual complexity. Yeah, this watch is a winner. I think not just because of the name. Avoid the name. If this said Hoyer on it, I would say the same thing. If this said, you know, Omega on it. It's a stunning example of contrast, understanding how colors can work well, understanding how to make a chronograph legible, functional, time-telling, easy. It's one of the best of the show, I think, for what it is. Right on. JPS is a brilliant piece. Good price for whoever picks it up. Yes, for sure, Megan, I agree. Again, please tag me in the chat if you want to uh, catch my attention. Rob says 37, though, too small. I mean, it's tiny, right? 37 mils for a chronograph. But then again, the bigger bezel probably would make it a bit larger on the wrist. The way they've worked the lines here with the, the negative space of the yellow inside. Um, Russell's saying, sorry to repeat, but the pieces already include 26. They, they already include. You mean on this? I'd like to know this because we were discussing this the last time we did these shows, that the, the buyer's premium on top of it does the actual sale price include it? I really don't know. But if that's the case, then, oh, wait, if that's the case, then this watch did go for well over a million, right? Okay, moving on. 62. Here's a less attractive example. Mm. I mean, next to the next to the contrast of the, the black and gold, this is it's a bit too much. And this is where, that's cheap, Ethan says. Yeah, it sure is cheap. This is where we start seeing how contrast can, I mean, you lose a lot of the details. This is when the Daytona really got that bling factor around it, you know. I'm just trying to check the dates. This was from 1969, okay, 1978. Now we start seeing the, the Wall Street edge starting to push through with the solid gold variants. It's just, no, as far as a functional chronograph, it's just, it's just nowhere near as, precise as a, as a watch used as an instrument right it's like an overblown picture too much contrast yeah yeah so i mean that's it is this is this i'm trying to like get this aligned okay i hope you're seeing this all fine on the screen so estimate between 60 and 90 and it went for 105 okay no box or papers i don't think uh, guarantee presentation box okay who knows if it's or original bezel yeah there's there's no contrasting bezel sadly but and Mark says, nice, but I think that's your, your opinion on most of these pieces, Mark. Uh, everything's a nice, but nah. uh, I feel the same way. Um, okay, this is fun. Show of hands, yes or no, Y or N, Cartier crash. What do you think? What do you think? 
I, I find them whimsical. Let's use that word, whimsical. And, and, and Phillips finds them extremely rare. Uh, right, so between 60 and 120. Now, I was watching this live and thought, good God, 250 it went for. So the Cartier crash. There's all kinds of strange stories about how this watch originated. Apparently, it's, it's a BS story that it was because a car crashed into a house and the watch was taken to, I think, Cartier in London to get it fixed. And they decided they're going to recreate the mold or I don't know, whatever. Now, okay, this is a bit, it's, it's, it's Salvador Dali, right? Is that the best, the best example of um, surrealism? This is a good example of the surrealist movement watch. I see many no's. It's great. Yes for an art piece, no for a watch. So this is what I find funny. Okay, this, this looks a bit peculiar, but you look at the back, and the back really doesn't speak to me at all. It looks kind of lazy in the way, they've, the way they've done the back here. So it makes this watch rare, and I use the word rare very sparingly because it's mentioned every five seconds, is because it's platinum. And uh, yeah, 21 millimeter width, 38 mil length, it's a tiny watch. Yes, for a conversation piece. Hmm. It's as useful as the Daytona, Jeb says. Oh, I love you guys. You guys are great. I love, I love the banter. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's surrealism encapsulated in a watch. It's one of the best examples of a surrealist piece of art. Stop highlighting rare. 73 math says he digs it. The Cartier Dali. I mean, that, if Cartier ever contacts me, this is the way we're going to go. Okay, moving away from the crash to... A Tonk Sintre, I think. Is this a Sintre? I don't know. Highly rare and attractive. You see, with all this rubbish on the screen, I can't even tell what the piece is. I don't even know. Is it a Sintre? I think it is. They don't even mention that. God. Right, so this is with the green numerals. I also saw this going up for auction. Made for the Italian market. This made famous by um, Steve McQueen, Thomas Crown Affair. I think he wore a Sintre. Or did he wear an American? I don't know. But what makes this unique, I think it's also platinum. Uh, got to filter through all the rubbish here. Plat, Enum, limited edition, cool. Green numerals for the Italian market, between 7 and 14. Went for 36. Oof. It's a nice piece. Watch the interview between um, Waco and John Goldberger on his collection of Tanks and Trays because you, you'll see some good stuff. Everything from sterling silver to, I mean, he has a, a full box of them. Uh, a real collector in this space. <laughs> Ethan says, great for a girl. I mean, these are pretty good. It's 44 mils in length, so it's actually very good size. What makes this Intre great is that, was it an American? I f oh, God, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's a tank. Am I going to actually, let me just scroll down and work it out. Here we go. Every single one of these has a description. Tank American. There we go. Okay. Good to know. 18 karat gold. Hold on a second. 18, wait a moment. 18 jewels. What? 18 karat gold buckle. See, this is when it gets technical, but it's a platinum case. I don't know. I don't know, man. All right. To each their own. Another example. Italian markets. Burgundy dial, which is quite nice. Uh, Reverso, yeah, Reverso is a good example of a watch to get over this. Um, so, highly rare and attractive. Uh -huh. uh, between five and 10,000. Went for 25. Yeah, it's cool. It looks good on the wrist. It does look pretty good. I don't know so much about those colors, though. That, that burgundy, yeah, it's a little bit too jarring for the eye. But I think we're going to see a few more Cartiers. It's going to get a bit technical as we, as we go through. That's uh, weight white gold. Yes, I don't know. It looks like a lot of these watches do chop and change parts. Okay, moving on through to oh, oh, okay. <clears throat> so we have a, a Pasha, a very passionate Pasha, I think. I really hope I'm calling it a Pasha, and it's right. Look at that that dial. I, that, I'm lost for words. Here. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely not a watch for everyone. It's, uh, it's a watch for few. Between three and six, it was expected to go for. It went for nine. Someone spent nine grand on this, basically. The Pasha is a nice-looking watch, I think, overall. But when they start diamond encrusting the, the window frame, the jail bars around the dial, that's when it starts getting, yeah. Move on, nothing to see here. Thank you, Megan. Very... Very succinct. It's good. 
Cartier did that. Yes, Forbin. They've they've had some some absolute stinkers in their past too. Nice for inmates. Freedom. Mm. Okay, now we got a Piaget Tiger's Eye pendant. Would anyone want to wear this? <clears throat> uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we're gonna go back to the three hour mark. I'm not. I'm not. I, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give in. More coffee, more alcohol. 1974, Tiger's Eye went for 15 grand. Someone got this for 15 grand. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> Reference 96. 30, 1939 with a 30 millimeter diameter. 30 millimeters. 30 millimeters. Hand wound. Okay. 20 joules. Nice looking movement. Between 15 and 25, it went for 18.9. How can anyone wear a 30 mil? I mean, this is this is a male's a man's watch from that from back in the day, you know? Uh yeah. 1939. 30 mil. Eric saying, here we go. We're not going that way, Eric. We are not. I refuse. We've only been running for an hour and a half. I cannot lose the plot already. That's reserved for the three-hour mark. Okay. Yeah, nice. Salmon dial's cool. I do love the quarter Arabics. Next. Sector dial, kind of. 1913. Really? 1913. This is probably one of the first reference 96s. Um Argent. I, I don't know. I'm not going to read. I can't. I can't speak French. So, uh, as most probably know, nice looking piece. It looks like it's seen the wars. Uh, between 15 and 30 went for <laughs> went for 40. Eesh. It's just it's just it's a bit much. This is a better example, though. This is cool. I really like this combination. Now we're looking at again. Get rid of the fluff. Highly important. Possibly unique. Get lost. Stainless steel wristwatch. Okay. I was looking to see if it was white gold. I really like this combination. Black sector dial. If they just had to bump up the size from 31 to 38, they would have a killing here. Patek doesn't have to do this. We can get other brands to do this out there. Uh, talk about, I mean, they did such cool things back in the day. The way they've rotated the nine and the six. We've seen this with a lot of pieces. Actually, uh, we featured a watch similar to this. But thanks to Cedar Canoe, he sent this into Wrist Shot Week. It was actually inspired by, by this model, by, by Habering, Harbering. Always get that damn name wrong. Someone needs to actually pronounce it to me. Anyway, really nice piece. 31 mils in diameter, though. Make for a good pinky ring. Here's another one. 1956, 31 mil. A highly rare, no, well-preserved, uh, platinum. Okay, that's cool. Platinum with an engraving on the back. Uh, I guess if you like engravings. Uh, the, the, the Knutston Award, I don't know what that is, for scientific research, okay, cool. Um, but again, Reference 96, most of you probably know that the Reference 96 was the, the real star child, the starting point for the Calatrava, and it's just grown from there ever since. But yeah, it's not for everyone, especially at 31 mils, so uh, going to carry carry on through. Another one. This is like a Patek Philippe section. So I'm sure we will probably speed through a lot of these models unless you're interested. So this was expected to go between 50 and 80. It went for 88, 34 mil. So now we're getting to a, a, a decent wearing size. Um, moon phases, calendars, as you would expect. I do like this dial. I mean, this watch I would expect to go for 500 grand. That's how little I know about Patek as a brand. Uh, I don't know whether whether or not this is worth 500 or worth 50 or 20. Um, so yeah, sadly, I'm not an enthusiast in this zone. I'm sure there are a few others out there. I, th I know uh, Russell is big on these pieces, so he'll be able to give us some some specs. This is a gorgeous example. Look at the look at the dial design. 1937, 31 mil diameter. Did not meet its reserve. Hmm. Highly attractive and rare. Every single time. What's the deal with that? Don't you feel like we've done 73 of these already? Don't you feel like it just loses its punch when we start talking about, about highly rare and attractive every single time? And they're trying to put words in your mouth and it just doesn't it doesn't do it, you know? The bracelet's cool, yeah. Stretch rivet. It is pretty sharp. I mean, you can't see that this is a Patek Philippe today, which I find quite interesting. Those inspirations from back in the day have been lost in, in many ways, unfortunately. It's 1937, 31 mil <clears throat> diameter. And this guy is losing his voice already. 
I'm not going to have the whiskey. I'm going to have water. Hmm. Going to get adventurous. Moving on to number 74. Okay, another salmon dial from 1949. This was at a time when they were using salmon dials because it was a very attractive color, not because they were planning on spruiking and selling it for, for a higher premium. Okay, between 35 and 55, it went for 60. 33 mil diameter. This is a gorgeous looking watch. This looks almost exactly like a Vacheron Corn de Vache, don't you think? It's the dial looks exactly. The only thing that is missing is the the corn de vache lugs, and and that's it. <clears throat> nice looking piece for thirty three mils. Uh, oh, I wish they were bigger. <laughs> I really wish. Everyone's saying hit the whiskey. You guys are the worst. Right, moving to seventy five. Vacheron, thirty six point five millimeters from nineteen fifty two. Estimated between five and ten, went for nine four. I do like this case design. Very deco. Even the dial. The dial is also very deco in the way it looks. Yes, for lot 74. A couple of mentioning. That's cool. Uh, 75, no way. See, I, I love it. I love the discourse that this sparks. The case design is nice. It's very minimalist. There's some rare Pateks out there that use this exact case that makes it a bit more unique. Okay, moving on. Ooh. Right, 1955. Between 12 and 18, it went for 15. Yeah, this is not beautiful. This is, oh, what were they thinking? Extremely rare. You see, they don't mention attractive here. I wonder why. You know? Yeah. Fancy cases. There they sure are. I mean, 1950s, they were, they were all over the show. Right. An Audemars Piguet. A most probably unique and elegant white and pink gold triple calendar. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty cool. Grandfather clock ish. What? Between 70 and 100, and it went for 107. 107 for a, for a 36 mil length watch. Wow. I do love the Breguet numerals. I think they've done a nice job here. The hands are also very elegant. Grandfather clock sp uh, styled, I would say always extremely rare i mean you know it's like what, what are you trying to do what are you like, what are you trying to like say to us with these yeah nice looking piece a little bit excessive for what it went for possibly unique i don't know next as mentioned this is cool now here we're looking at a 1938 wow stylized case i do really like that squared case this looks like you know panerai ish this looks quite modern, actually, contemporary. We could see this being reused today in many ways. The dial, not so much, but the case and lugs, yeah. I mean, they're, they're motoring pretty well. Uh, movement looks good. 33 mils. Yeesh. Between 25 and 50, went for 52.9. Oof. Two oval. I didn't even notice that looking here. This is actually an oval dial. Where do you ever see that? Someone must have botched the CAD cam that day. <laughs> uh Case looks a bit like a 56. Yes, it does. Yeah, we're having a good time. I hope you're enjoying the the, the, the discussion around these. Uh, again, if you'd like to ask me some questions as we're doing this, I wanted this to be more like a backdrop for us to talk around whatever subject was on your mind as well as this. Now, we just saw a Vacheron. We just saw a Patek that had the exact same dial as this, like not, not a couple of seconds ago. This is the Corn de Vache style dial that we know just not the right lugs interesting very interesting i don't know much about movements but this looks extremely modern 1945 34 mil size a very rare and elegant no, 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 no. i don't go very much into the into the details you know adding attractive between 50 and 80 went for 63 thomas thank you thomas has asked me a question hans has asked me a question what did i have for dinner hans asks what did i have for dinner I, I generally eat something quite small when it comes to presenting because, you know, I've got to keep the digest. I have three protein shakes a day, and that is absolutely killing me. I just had a cheese plate tonight, actually, and coffee, lots of coffee. So, yeah, I'm, I'm fully wired. I'm wired in. Uh, great question. I mean, ask me more of those. That's fun. Uh, Thomas, any favorites so far for me? Mm. JPS, I think, is beautiful. The, the Pussy Galore Bakelite, stunning. Also, love that turnograph. 
So yeah, I'm a bit biased, I guess. Uh, the five and that that gorgeous tuxedo Amiga five nine seven zero from two thousand and five. This is like I think everyone tries to go after these with the you know the Eric Clapton models, and, and we've seen lots of these, even though it's rare and attractive, wouldn't you know? Uh, with moon phases and and all the the guff. Everyone, I mean, anyone who is a Patek collector would want to jump onto one of these because it is, it is just a, uh, it's a beaut. It is a gorgeous watch for what it is, as Russell says. It's stunning. What I like about it so much is that the presentation looks so true to what Patek is about. It doesn't deviate away uh, from its identity in the way it presents its parts. Uh, between 90 and 140, it went for 150, 157. A few more questions coming my way. Good workout today, Sam Ray says. Yes, it was. Uh, what did I do? Focused on biceps only for 50 minutes and then went for a, a run, like a mile or two. Torture, absolute torture. There's been some good sun. What has happened to this case? There's been some good sun on the south coast of England, so it's been a, it's been a nice time. Favorite whiskey of the year so far, Ashley asking. Uh, I don't have – the Glen Livet that I'm having is probably the best. Inch Murren from Loch Lomond, if Eric Bell is still watching. Stunning. Only a hundred to go. No more questions, Mark. Thanks, Dad. Uh, yeah, we, we're doing pretty well. A hundred minutes in, we've done. Have we even done? A, we haven't even done a half of these. Oh my God. Okay, I do have to motor. Nineteen seventy-seven, thirty-seven and a half mil diameter, butchered case. Looks like someone took a welding torch to it. Sadly, they decided. Yeah, we. Hmm. Shame, shame. How much? What? My eyes deceiving me. I've been staring at screens all day, so so please let me know if it's if it's just me. Four hundred between, and I went for seven hundred and five for for that case. Who uh, who would who would want? Uh, I don't know. Bayer printed dial. Okay, wonderful. But this ain't patina. This is when you you move out of patina and seven hundred. Okay, moving on. This is this is too much to bear. Another. There's so many of these. Um, between 250 and 500, this this went for 300. So whoever got this really got it for a a steal. I bet it's rare. And says, let's check. Let's double. Let's double check. It's one of a kind. You know, extremely rare. You were wrong. It's one of a kind with it with a case like that. Good God. Someone really held it too close to a Bunsen burner. This is a you know, a good example as mentioned. 1953 look how immaculate this case is you'd swear it's brand new that's impressive it is actually a gorgeous looking chronograph really truly um it's a classic in many ways i love the blued hands sparsity simplicity yeah this is a good example uh q maestro asking me I'm, I'm liking these questions it does keep me on my toes uh what time is it by you in Wisconsin, it's quarter to five. Uh, here in the UK, it's quarter to 12 in the evening. So I'm sure most of you are probably joining in uh, and you're in the States, you're probably working and using this as background noise. I hope it's entertaining background noise. Uh, so it's a rare, large, attractive, large at 36 and a half mils. Okay? Pink gold chronograph, tachymeter scale. Okay, This is a beautiful example, like, like no kidding. Uh, this is stunning. And it was bought for quite a steal, only 300 grand. All right, 1997. This is also rare and attractive. I just don't understand who's doing this. Right, so between 8 and 16 and went for 50. Now there's a viewer of this channel who has a 1995 longer one. And yeah, they are pretty nice. They are pretty nice. And the way you can tell, oh, I see what they've done here. Yeah? So this watch did come with a solid back back in the day. They've obviously, whoever the owner was, replaced with a clear back. But the solid back is what validates it as an original. And uh, yeah, the, the doppel, here we go. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Doppel Federhaus. Doppel Federhaus. Uh, that's what denotes it to be a watch of its, of its time, you know, early, late 90s. This watch brought Lunga back from the grave, which is pretty impressive, you know. Uh, there's, there's lots of history. The Lunga one is an absolute gem for what it represents, what it is. Comes the presentation box, out of packaging. Nice. Whoever got this, good piece. Bit too much money, but you know what am I to say? Next one from 2008. Yeah, uh, between 12 and 24 went for 25. A very fine. I don't mention rare or attractive. Hmm. So we got a world time complication. Also GMT. Um, 
power reserve. It's just a it's just a longer one with a bit of an extra extra boost. Twin spring twin spring barrel. Eric Bell says, I don't know. Please don't ask me unless we look at the movement. Idiot. Uh, I can't I can't see any. Uh, I don't know. I've got to motor through these guys. I mean, we're on eighty four. Got it. We got to bump to eighty five. Oh yeah. Another highly rare and attractive. I mean, this this looks like a stock photograph. Oh, because it's in packaging still. Okay. I mean, this is when it gets a bit dicey when your watch is presented in a in a in a um. Okay. So between twenty five and forty five went for thirty seven. This watch is by no means old. We've we've seen lots of these before. It's just nice to see it in its packaging, I guess. Uh, not bad. Okay, moving on. We've seen lots of Pateks. Okay, now we have a Tropical. This is a very nice example. Uh, Sigma dial, pre-Daytona, right? There's no Daytona on the dial. Between 50 and 100, went for 88. Uh, box papers, no. Tropical sub-dials is what sold this watch, basically, at the end of the day. Uh, it's it's attractive. <laughs> it's attractive and it's rare every single damn time. I've been doing 86 of these and every single watch says the same damn thing. It gets really exhausting reading that every time. So 6263, 1973, 37 mil diameter. I've seen a couple of these already. It looks like a modern panda. Yeah, it does in many ways. The tropical subdials, whether you like them or not, eh, adds a bit more diversity to the piece overall. But still, for a watch like this, you kind of want box and papers because that just drives up the, the, the resale value so much. I mean, this would go for almost well over double the price if it had full set. So yeah, unfortunately, this watch also looks like it's been polished. Not bad. Not bad. We've seen quite a lot of these, though, in the world. Oh, geez, another. It seems like Patek. Interestingly, we are not seeing too many sports Patek. We're seeing more dress Patek for a change. Um, 1991, we've seen a lot of these. This is a, a highly sought after model, and they don't mention that in the description, but I'm going to say it. It is highly sought after because it is one of the first perpetuals I think they ever introduced. I feel like it is. And uh, this is a gorgeous example. The 3940, it's spoken about a lot. It really has spoken about a lot. From 1991, okay, uh, 36 mil diameter, okay, that's what we expect. Between 25 and 45 went for 50. I mean, certificate of origin, presentation box. So it doesn't mean it has, does it have the full set? I don't know. But this this really is, I mean, um, if the pontiff out there is watching, sell all his watches and get one of these, you're in good stead. This is a, this is a good example of a watch that represents the Patek name extremely well for what it is. And it's gorgeous. The three, the, the three nine seven, whatever the hell. The three nine four zero is a great piece. No kidding. And it looks like Scottish watches has joined us. Welcome, gents. So good having you here. I hope you enjoying the uh, the monologue. All right, six two three nine, rare and attractive. They mentioned I should say attractive and rare. That's really mixing it up. A good idea. An attractive and rare stainless steel, Paul Newman. Uh, anyone who, who's joining, again, uh, in the description of this video, you can follow along the, the listings. Uh, I've, I've put the link in there, links to the lots, 1 to 179. Right, so this is the Paul Newman, Paul Newman, Paul Newman. Uh, it's tiring, it's exhausting hearing this all the time, but it is a cool-looking watch overall. Uh, just bear in mind that this watch was kicked around showrooms. It wasn't appreciated. It was basically given to Joanne Woodward by... A uh, authorized dealer when she said that my husband drives cars and they thought you know what let's try and get as many of these unsellable pieces out there and uh yeah i mean where do we begin 1967 36 mil between 100 and 150 it went for 189 pretty acceptable the condition is good it's really good the lugs are a nice shape i think has been polished i would imagine it looks like it has been yeah it definitely has been polished but, I mean, the rivet bracelet is good. It's nice seeing that it's it's all there. No mention about box and papers, but it is a lot of fun, I think. It is, it, is a, it is a nice watch in its own way. Take the Paul Newman and all that hype away from it. Uh, like the JPS, it understands contrast, line weight. It knows what it is. It's not illegible. Is that the right way of using the word? Illegible. You can read the time, read the chronograph extremely well. 
it's small, <laughs> 36 mils. But I mean, that was the style back in the day. Yeah, not bad. Someone was saying a grail watch. I like it. Yeah, but just again, I'd like to emphasize, if you're if you are watching this, think more about if you would wear this watch yourself, barring the price. Just think about it as a piece that you would put on the wrist every day. Would you enjoy wearing it? It's good. I would I would enjoy it. A bit of fun. A bit of fun to throw about. 5070. Right on. So we've seen the 5170 spoken about a lot. The 5070 is very classically inspired with its rounded case forms. Uh, and uh, lots of people prefer this because of its complexity next to the uh, the 5170. I can't say the aesthetic speaks to me much. It looks a little bit too bulbous for what it is. Uh, between 80 and 160 went for 170. It's interesting. I'd like to know your, can, can everyone mention whether yes or no, if they would pick up a watch like this? My, my gut feeling is that would be me. Um, just because I find the case and the lugs to be just too rigid. This watch deserves to be curvaceous. I mean, that's what makes these, these dress watches a bit more elegant. It feels a bit more like a, you're wearing a plate on your wrist in a way, you know, in your, your wrist. What am I saying here? Coming up to the two hour mark, we need more coffee. I haven't touched the whiskey. I'm a bit scared to. We all know what happens when I get plastered on good whiskey. I'll be laughing nonstop for 15 minutes. Luckily, there's no there are no brands on this that will make me burst out laughing. But uh, yeah, what's the size? 42 mils. I didn't even realize. 42 mil diameter. Monster. Mentioning that it's too big. Looks like a Breguet Marine, Freddie Turner says. I mean, yeah, okay. That's a, that's a unique take. Thank you, Blue Shirt. Blue Shirt, you're a wonderful human being. You really are. You really are there to support me, and uh, uh, I really appreciate it. So, this is a, what? Okay. Don't look at the price. If you shield your eyes, a very important, extremely rare, and highly attractive. <laughs> so we've got three adjectives or adverbs. Just got one adjective and adverb describing. I mean, what? Okay, okay. So this is this is the full package. Can't deny it. It's got everything, including a, a minute repeater by the little crank on the side here, which is really cool. Um, in the collector space, this is what everyone goes after. But for for one point four million, add thirty percent on top of that, and yeah, it's a bit it's a bit excessive. Thank you, Megan. I do like I like how Nixon is spelled. You guys, you guys are great. I, I'm just seeing it all in the chats. You wonderful people, just wonderful people. You're wanting me to fail. Uh, so two thousand and one, black dial is gorgeous. Uh, you can read the time and, and use it pretty well for what it is. But then with a minute repeater, you don't really need to worry about it, you know, because it chimes the time for you. Do they even give you a movement shot? Question. Does this, oh, it comes with two dials. That's cool. So you can swap them out. I think Russell must be frothing at this because this is pretty much the collector's dream in the Patek space. Yeah, so the minute repeater, it's it's quite the gem. We're talking about the function. And when you start the minute repeater, I think this is the little gadget that moves. And the little discs that chime, uh, I can see one one disc there, the actual uh, hammers that ring the bell, the top there. This being, this would be a Patek Philippe, no, this would be a, a glass, not glass, what am I saying? This would be a Swiss seal, not a Patek seal on the, the movement itself. Yeah, nice watch. It is extremely rare. I mean, it is. But I mean, just, just these these adjectives and adverbs just get a bit much. Right, moving to lot number ninety-one. Ooh. How much? I'm just going to leave that on the screen for you to enjoy for a second as I reach you in the, ch in the chat. I see someone joining us from Brazil. Bruno, welcome from Brazil. It's incredible seeing where everyone comes in from from all over the world. Uh, yeah, Papa Cherry Fisherman's friend Paul says. I don't have. Ch I need to get some more. I've got black current that I'm working my way through, and it's it's terrible. Black current just doesn't doesn't do it for me as much as cherry does. It still works, but it just doesn't doesn't taste that good. Oops. Um. So an impressive and extremely rare. Yeah, yeah. Platinum perpetual calendar chrono. Um. <sighs> yeah. I think we can give this one a miss. I don't know if it speaks to us much. 1999, 27 mils. Nice pointing out there. Oy. And how much did it go for? Because of the salmon dial, five eight 
5.9. Oh, no. You see what just happened? Now, lot 92, the infamous lot 92. Like I said in the beginning of the show, you click it, it crashes the page. But never fear, because I'm on the ball. Close you off. Or maybe I can, uh, what should I do here? Hmm, hold on, hold on. We go back a click. Will this work? It completely crashes the page. It's unbelievable. I can't believe they haven't fixed, fixed that glitch. Yeah, so on the ball, we shouldn't have any more problems. <laughs> Lot 92, very dark dial. Yeah, so what happened was the, the listing was pulled out at the last minute. So, oops, hold on. Boom. Uh, because it's being pulled out, they just the, the page just completely goes dead. I really hope it doesn't happen again. But uh, just gone past halfway. Mark, you're a legend. Thank you. Was that the Queen's Watch? I have no idea, Samurai. So this model is, it didn't meet its, uh, its reserve by the looks of things. Oh, wait, hold on. I don't think these have been sold yet. This lot is no longer available. Yeah, it's beautiful. The beautiful thing. So we know this, the 5396 white dial. Mm, not as cool as, as the, I think there's a blue variant. There's a black dial too. Uh, this model, white gold. Yeah, we've seen enough of these before. I won lot 92. Uh, Russell, I think you're pulling my leg. As far as I know, they mentioned at the beginning of the show that lot <laughs> that lot 92 was taken up. It was a Patek, if I remember, but that was it. I like this reference a lot. Uh, Mika, are you from from Sweden or from Norway? Nice to have you here. Really appreciate my designer approach. Oh, geez, I mean to each their own. I don't know what I'm doing. This is just a time where we can sit back and have a good laugh at all sorts of weird and bizarre stuff. So back to the Nautiluses again. Nautilize. What I love about this, many are mentioning it's ugly, saying next. So 371, 3710. What I like about this is it's very much the middle finger to the sports watch because it's taking the classic dress style and sticking it in a sports case, which is something you don't see very often. And that's why I find it entertaining. It's a bit of a, a bit of a jab, juxtaposition, or however you want to say it. But yeah, I think we are now moving into the territory of watches that haven't been sold yet. And I really freaking, I need to open, hold on a sec. I do have to do this. Sorry, ladies and gents. I do have to open up another one of these because I feel like there's going to be some other bizarre crash at one point and if that happens i will it'll spend a lot more time wasting my yeah right 95 we have looked at many of these featured these on wrist shot week as well uh 5205g highly rare and it's not highly rare what are you talking about they're all over the place right next seen so many of these i do love this this model in particular wrist shot week from two weeks ago this was the cover photo and it's absolutely stunning i think i think julian sent it in and he sold a hulk submariner paid a bit more cash and got that watch right will time superb and extremely rare 2014 these are getting a bit excessive now don't you think i feel like it's just becoming a patek show can we move on to the next one we've seen will times oh okay this is something else circa 2000 um uh, well, at least they are trying. At least they are trying with these descriptions. Now we have very attractive. Uh, so between 15 and 25 is expected to go for. And uh, yeah, so for everyone who's joining us now, at this point, you can place your bids now, <laughs> now for these pieces uh, between now and tomorrow because uh, they haven't been launched yet. So we have a PVD case, number 172 of 500 pieces. I don't know if this has any link to Arnold Schwarzenegger, does it? It should uh, does it? I don't know. I don't see. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna scroll. But yeah, it's um it's what it is. It is what it is. These are popular, extremely rare and very attractive. Um next. I like this. 2005 Lunga one, fine, rare, large, white gold, expected between 15 and 30. This is a great example. I I feel like I feel like we've seen a piece like this shared before. This is cool. Really nice to see loom on the lunger. Um, also, old school with the doppel feder house, the base. 
nice looking model, the black on black tuxedo. Nice to have a luminous elements to it as well, I think. It's a gorgeous, and also the Romans. You don't see Romans on these dials very often, so that's cool. Um, yeah. So next up, we're doing pretty good. We're about to hit number 100. How's that? And we've been running the show for just over two hours. I love it. Um, right. Urban jo Jorgensen. Jorgensen. I'm going to try and get that right. Reference three. Very attractive. Rare platinum. Nana. I mean, got to say, I do like these lugs. Between 15 and 25, circa 2,000, 38 mil diameter. They don't show us the movement of the watch. It's okay. I mean, it's it's watchmaking. You can you can appreciate the watchmaking that goes into this for sure. Again, if someone would please like to tag me in the chat if there were like some more questions to be asked or whatever else, now is your time. Uh, Forbin saying Venn diagram dial. Yes, that's a very good point. It is. A, I dig it. I really do like this combo. It does. You, you kind of lose the asymmetry to the dial in a way because of all the extra elements there, but still, really nice combo. Okay, so we've seen this piece. Okay, wonder where that's going to go. And now this is quite a recent model, a 7787 Breguet. I mean, this is the classic, the way we expect to see it. 2012, between 10 and 15. Not bad. Um, not for everyone. I don't know about you, but the faces on the moon, when there's actually a face on the moon, maybe it is more classically inspired, but I don't find it attractive very much. Let me know. Um, who is your favorite moderator, Megan? Oh, I can't take favorites. It's like it's like choosing your children. You can't do that. Uh, you guys are all great in your own way. I think you know it's it's what makes it special. That's a horrible question, Megan. I'm affronted. Uh, and 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 Nitsan says I'm a great resource for learning. No, please. There's no point in getting my head any bigger than it is already. There's really no point. Thank you, but. Uh, Definitely don't need compliments at all. This is not what these shows are about. No compliments. Uh, right, so we have a power reserve, and it's asymmetrical. It's very typical of Breguet's aesthetic. It's also a very recent model. So, I mean, um, yeah, it's it's cool. Not bad. There are, better, there are better examples out there, though. This is stunning. Ashley says, everyone's saying, now hit the whiskey. That's, that's horrible. Okay, two hours in. Okay, I'll do it. Let's start. Let's see if we can get this last hour through without me laughing. That's the point. Should I try and finish the whiskey by the end? Dangerous. Because I am technically working on an empty stomach that is cemented with a protein, whey protein overload. And now that's nice. This model did come with a with a, a winder in the box, if I remember right. Between 20 and 40, leap year indication. Oh, that's what you're paying for. This This is one of the most beautiful movements that they make. I think, next to the datagraph and other manual wine chronos. I love that small rotor. It's also very rare to see automatic uh, lungers in general. The majority of them are all, um, you know, manual wound. And and Russell's saying nice size, 38 and a half mils. Very good size. For what it is, this is what you want out of a dress watch. For, for me, I feel like I've said this a few times before, that the, the ideal dress watch is one that manages to use its dial space well. If it's too empty and sparse, uh, it needs it can be smaller. But when it's too big, you need to you need to add some kind of complexity to give it a bit more spice, a bit more pizzazz. We all know it's Thomas. Well, Megan, Thomas is the OG, so he does deserve all the credit. Let's be real. Uh, he's he is the greatest. He really is the greatest. Uh, yeah. Nice piece, Roman numerals, got to like it, got to like it a lot. Moving on to number 102, another Patek Philippe from 1993. So it's a, it's a birth year reference, and my voice is starting to break, so time to get the Fisherman's Friends out. The bonus is when the voice, the voice does break, <clears throat> it's kind of like Smoker's voice. Sounds a bit more appealing. 3970, rare and attractive. Pay close attention everyone. Between 45 and 65, this is a good example. But what I find funny, my magic mouse hand is not working here. What I find funny is that these lugs just aren't sharp. I'm guessing that's how they made them back in the day. But to me, when I see this, I feel like it's it's been polished excessively. You know? Uh, I really do like this, this um, bezel though. That is stunning. Sloped up, meeting the top of the case where it's it's 
well proportioned, well sized for what it is. Also, just enjoy the serifs on the on the subdials there. Nice piece. I'm sure this is going to go for like a hundred grand. I'd, I've me and Patek collecting in general. I I don't know where to start. These references. How anyone can remember, you know, 37, 50, 39, 70. It's like it's another world. You need to you need to have a book in an archive. Why the loomed hands? I think we're talking about another reference again. I, I need to try and keep track with what's going on. We're doing pretty good. I think we might just be able to cross the three-hour mark for the show for a change, which is a big bonus. Again, keep asking your questions. I feel like I'm just presenting here, and it's not good. Uh, we need to we need to keep the the dialogue going between each other. The YouTube Iron Man Blue Shirt says yes. Thomas is the YouTube Iron Man. I mean, everyone calls me Marathon Man. It's very good. I think Iron Man for Thomas is probably the best best description. You see, Russell knows his references. I look at that and I see, you know. Uh, the Enigma machine, three nine seven zero five nine seven zero five two seven zero. I go. This is a five zero zero four. For those of you, um, very rare and extremely elegant. Okay then, so we got diamond indices. We've got uh, between one hundred and sixty and two hundred and forty expected to go for. I do like the uh, the single pusher on the on the crown. Beautiful movement. I mean, you can't deny that is a lot of work to put one of those together. From 2006, 36 mils in diameter, though. I mean, isn't that a bit small for what you're dealing with uh, as far as a watch goes? Especially one that has everything on it, you know, full calendar. I don't know if it's a, yes, it is full perpetual calendar chrono. You want to see something a bit bigger? <laughs> I got a super chat from Thomas. Uh, have people in the chat uh, got a favorite watch so far? Good question. Everyone comment. There's some great stuff coming up, I think. I hope, if I remember right. Uh, Going to keep motoring, though. Next up, another Patek. Okay. I see there's a trend here. So we have a very fine and attractive ride between 60 and 90. Um, hold on. Russell has this watch. Russell owns this watch. This being an enamel-painted dial. This, these are these are pretty gorgeous. They're pretty gorgeous. It's a 40 millimeter piece as well. So you are getting full dial architecture. What I like about this reference, especially, I mean, the dial is one thing. It's beautiful. But the hand, that hour hand is just very fine, as uh, as Phillips likes to put it. Yeah, stunning piece. It really is a good looking watch. Also enjoy the, the deco crown guards. Uh, and Andreas says, you think 36 is small, but then you try it on and it's just right. I would need to try on a watch of that kind of complexity at that size and see what it's like. I can imagine it probably is pretty gorgeous. The weight of these pieces also takes you by surprise, as most of us probably know. Um, Blue Shirt Buddha is a gentleman class act. Blue Shirt, the fact that you're here is great. Thank you so much for joining us. I, I hope the babysitting is going well, if you're jumping in and out of it, or if you are here to stay, I don't know. But uh, yeah, this is a stunning piece. I know, Russell, if you are in the chat, you do have this one. You have the, the R rather than the J. Oh, okay. I didn't even notice this was yellow gold. So he has the, the rose gold variant. It's cool. A really nice example. Next up. Oy. Back to the Daytona, the boys and girls. 1998, highly rare. What makes this highly rare? What are you smoking? Between 20 and 40 grand. New old stock. Okay, first time I've seen this before. New old stock. I wonder why it's new old stock. Can anyone guess in the chat why this is new old stock? It doesn't have a bracelet. I uh, don't know if this is an original strap for it either. Uh, 39.5 mil diameter. This being, this looks like a Zenith movement actually. Uh, 16519. Was this the precursor? This, this is the, I feel like this is a Zenith movement to it. But uh, yeah, I mean, diamonds on the Daytona like this just don't, don't, uh, white dial with stones. Yeah, I don't get it. As Terry says, I agree. All right, we can move on from this, this gem to the next. Uh, it comes with a, a case back sticker. Good to know. Right. Looks like a brick. Okay, now we get to some more of these, these dials. 1803, uh, 1971, between 20 and 40 is expected to go for. The dial looks good, radioactive, you know, kind of reminds you of radium. The diamonds, though, where do these diamonds come from? I have to ask. They're just, it's like, uh, 
I feel like so many so many gray market dealers are starting to push these out more and more, and it's it's tiresome. You see them everywhere, and uh, M is a misprint. Uh, I don't know where. I probably missed. I probably missed where you were referring to. Yes. Okay. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Uh, Sixteen fifty five. A moment of silence. I have a love affair with this watch. I think it's it's plain plain to see. I, I it's just absolutely. And this is such a good example too. So I I'm not even going to read this because this is just this is just abysmal. Okay, 1979, 38 mil diameter. Between 12 and 24 Gs, it does not come with a box or papers, but the case condition, the bezel condition, the dial, uh, mi amor, absolutely. Also, just small things like look at the orange hand. Look how well preserved. Actually, you know, you know what? I'm going to get right into this sucker. This is a time when you can enjoy all the little details. Is that, is that really how far it zooms in? Just squint your eyes. After the Daytona, of course, I, I would, I wouldn't even look at a Daytona if given the opportunity to pick up this. Honestly, um, so look at the dial quality here. If you can see it, squint. You'll have to zoom into your screens. Maybe the orange hand is just stunning. It's not an albino orange hand. It's it's crisp. The dial itself, all the plots are well appointed. There's no missing loom anywhere. The bezel is absolutely spotless, virtually. Uh, I would imagine, so it's a Mark II from 1979-ish. We don't have the straight hand, but this is also a winner for me. I mean, I would I would take this any day of the week. I, I, know, I don't know so much if I prefer the, the standard bracelet with the hollow end link or if I prefer the rivet bracelet over it. Um, but yeah, I think most of us can agree. Forget Daytona's, this is it. I mean, it is, it's something else. It's X Factor. I'm not going to call it the Steve McQueen and all that stuff. I just think the, the reason why I... I spruik this watch so much and talk it up so much probably more than i should is because it's just such an outlier it's an ugly duckling i mean that this watch didn't sell back in the day no one everyone was going after the explorer and the gmt and the the submariner for, for its purpose the date just this watch was not looked at partly because i guess rolex kind of misjudged their marketplace looking at this spelunking cave exploring audience and partly because many would just consider it kind of ugly next to the other attractive sports pieces that we know today. So I love the 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 dejected, the outliers, and this is one of the best. It doesn't look like Rolex at all, and that's what I think makes it special. Uh, Paul, five packs of cherry. I'm going to get Cherry Fisherman's Friends just because of that, Paul. Thank you. And mention if everyone says no. And that's it. I mean, it's one of those watches that divides opinion. What I do love, though, you can wear this every day. And guess how many people would recognize it? A very select few. And that makes wearing a vintage Rolex a lot more attractive. Yeah, I mean, I could talk about this for hours. I'm not going to. Paul, thank you for the super chat, really. Fisherman's friends, I will get cherry just for you. Thank you. Ah. Oh. Okay, got to move on. I think I've spoken about this for like 10 minutes already. Okay, to the next. What the? What the? Okay, 1940, 32 mil. Extremely... <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, what? Extremely unusual. So it's a compass integrated... Jeez, okay. Compass integrated dial. Nice. Between 10 and 20 grand. Uh-huh. Uh, bubble back. Extremely unusual. I mean, someone just decided, you know what this needs? You know what this needs? We need to add some more print here. Let's put an extremely unusual for a change. Hey, they're trying, as, as Andreas says. Yes, they are. They really are trying hard. Um, see how the 1655 influenced the P01? I mean, there's lots of little references. I do feel like the... um. The glycine airman was the real influence behind the bezel on this back in the day um, and rolex just milked it for a reason but uh, i think the best part of this listing is this extremely unusual they don't mention attractive so i guess they're they're biased to that extremely unique you know it's just missing parts it doesn't have a oh no i didn't even notice this <clears throat> we're coming to that that mark of me losing my 
I'm losing my my head. Uh, it doesn't even have parts. <laughs> okay, going to move on next. I'm going to move on. Oh, okay, good. Bring me back to Earth. 1016, I love you, darling. Right. A rare and very attractive. A, I mean, seriously, uh, this using this word for this watch, how many, you know how many 1016s there are on the world? It's the most common Rolex reference in the world. It was made from freaking 19, 1959-ish all the way up until 1989. How is, a, how is a, a watch that's been around for over 30 years with millions of them out there rare? You know, nothing special, Ethan says. Okay, but then the watch itself is beautiful, and I, I love it. For me, the, the perfect two-watch collection in the Rolex scheme, 1016, 1655, done. Maybe a 1665 sea dweller if you want to get technical. Oh, it's a gloss dial too, 1960. So this, this, is, a, this is a gem, actually. It really is a gem. Uh, rivet bracelet is in fantastic condition. Hmm. It looks like a sandwich dial. Am I, am I losing it here? I mean, you notice how the, there's... Okay, let's get into it. There's, there's some depth to the dial. Is this really how far it zooms in? Come on. That's a bit peculiar. But now, who doesn't like a gloss dial with a solid rail that runs around the dial inside there too? It's not a gilt. It's just after the gilt references. Neferion says the, the 1016 is kind of boring. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hold on. Oh, please don't do this to me. And this is what's just happened. So I haven't zoomed out fully, right? So Magic Mouse has completely... I'm pressing the escape button, as you can probably hear. Nothing happening. So, right. Damn it. I can't actually get... And you see, now there's another glitch. I can't get out of this page. <laughs> right. Let's just quickly roll through. Mm -hmm -hmm. Isn't it good that I, I had foresight, knew that something like this would happen? Uh, hold on. We're going to get back to it. Uh, no, 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 there we go. Back in, I think. Come on. Right. 1016 again. I think the beauty is in the fact that it's not boring. Well, it is, it's simple, boring enough, basic enough, but it's just such a good everyday wearing watch for what it is, what it represents um, in many, many ways. I don't think it hacks. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't. This reference especially. I mean, these are, these are old models. Um, Anyway, sorry, I missed you all in the chats. I had a bit of a technical fail there. Yeah, I've got to say that the Philips page, for as much as it's trying to be something that's globally usable, very difficult to navigate sometimes, especially when you're trying to do a presentation. The 1016, I would take over any of the modern references, really. The aesthetics of this classic, the rounded forms of the dial. I did a review. I, I compared the Smith's Everest to the modern 214270. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just a classic. It really is gorgeous. I, I like it a lot. I do like it a lot. Spoken about it more than most out there, I think. And yeah, time to move on to the next. Another 6263. God, how many are there? Highly rare again, but we've seen like 16 of these on the show already. Um, again, tag me in the chat if you want to get my attention. The uh, the the chat's going ballistic, and I'm not seeing anything going on here. There's there's chats about Zeno military, no patina. I, I, I'm getting lost here. 6263, highly rare. Yeah, yeah. 1985. Um, 40 to 60,000 expected to go for this uh, guarantee presentation box. Don't know if it's original stuff, though. Okay, not bad. I'm fed up of Daytona, Bricklane says. Yeah, I mean, most of us probably feel the same way. Good grief. There's still like 60 lots to go through. <laughs> uh, right. So we have. 1675 inside case back stamped. Uh, this given to a shake, I think, right? You know, these dials, these dials are making these watches so sought after, and I, I don't understand the appeal, honestly. Um, <laughs> all rare. Every single one is rare. I mean, it's it's just I don't understand the appeal of these dials at all. The Kunjars, the the stone dials. Do people want that uniqueness? What's I mean, it's a 1675 with with a little stamp on the dial. Who cares next? Megan says, yeah, I think it's nice condition though for what it is. Uh, the lugs have been polished. The dial is in good nick. Sick and tired of seeing them though. Oh, oh, oh no. 1972. 
And they call this the octopus or something, don't they? Let's just in, let's just bask in the beauty that is this. Oh, I mean, you know, sometimes it does take your breath away. This is one that that takes your breath away. It's even rarer. Yeah, I mean, imp impressive white gold. They don't say attractive though. Mm -hmm. I guess they they're onto something. Ah, oh, here we go. Here we go. So we saw a 6536 earlier. Now we have the original 6538. The Sean Connery James Bond watch on a rivet bracelet. It looks all intact. Expected to go between 100 and 200,000. Uh, what do they say here? Extremely rare, well presented, automatic, uh, mocha tropical dial. I don't know so much about the tropical dial. I don't know so much about this one. I like a tropic when it's faded evenly. I don't know so much about it when it looks like it's been, you know, hand painted on in places. And this, yeah, nice piece. Though. I mean, the condition is absolutely stunning. It looks like it has been polished once. If you have a look at the lugs, maybe not. Maybe not. Someone can correct me. But uh, yeah, again, looking at the tropic, I like it when it's a flat brown and not so much, you know, milky in some places and, and clear on others. But again, this being extremely rare and well preserved i don't know how many they made of these back at the day the six at the the red at the 12 is really nice yeah i mean that's the the red accent that made it unique the tudor black bay 58 is inspired by this as you can probably see here it says circa 1958 this is where all the inspirations came from i wonder what it will go for um yeah nice looking piece no it's original megan says what did i say i can't even remember what i said a couple of seconds ago it's just verbal diarrhea pure pure diarrhea the Rolex before it looks like it has warts. I mean, the, the octopus thing. I know, I know, it's a monster. You would buy that Rolex. I mean, it's it's one of. I'd love to know how many they made of these back in the day. If there were like five hundred of them out there, or it looks like a rusty dial. That's a good point, Paul. Yeah, it's a nice piece. The condition is absolutely incredible. Got to say. Yeah, so I think we've seen we've seen a couple of these already, but not. A tropical version, which is something quite unique, special, different, gilt dial, all sorts of little quirks about these dials back then. They don't show us the domed crystal, but it is stunning. I don't know why they didn't, actually, unfortunately. But yeah, what else needs to be said? Did this have a brass bezel? I'd like to know, maybe. Damp dial. This is the thing. I don't know how these, these dials go this color. Is it from water ingress? Is it from tropical heat, the sun? I don't know. Okay, moving on through to next. Oy. Circa 2006. Mm. See, now it's a GMT again that just has no practicality as far as it being a GMT. It's, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm getting too old for this stuff. It's just too much. Onyx and, yeah, here we go again. Here we go again with this BS. Yellow gold. I think we want to sw sw switch to next. Thank you, everyone. It's nice. Oh, okay. Now we're really getting the bottom of the barrel. 3,700. A spectacular rare. Very attractive. Mm -hmm. Between 100 and 2. What? With matching. Oh, I see. With matching. You see, this is why. It comes with matching cufflinks, people. you got to know they are thinking through these sales a bit more. Oh. Hmm. You know, one set of diamonds is good, but double. Does double really make a make a difference? Yeah, I mean it's 42 mils though. That's not bad. 1980 and it's 42 mils. Okay. Good luck. Okay, uh, what's this now? A rare and attractive. Can someone please explain to me why this is rare and it, it's attractive? Okay, I'll put it that way. But why is it rare? Yellow gold, it's yellow gold date just. Okay. Right, 1975, 35 mils. This is very much the Get Carter watch, I would imagine. No? Uh, what have I done? Oh, I'm sorry, everyone. Oh, this is a disaster. Right. Open up the next tab, boy. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Hmm. We really are having a good day with us now. I'm clicking all the wrong stuff. All right, back down to 
see what I mean? These, these, yeah, you see what happens if, if I drink? Doesn't help. Drinking does not help these kinds of things. Right. Moving on through. Nice looking watch. Another example. Extremely fine. 1951. Not priced badly, Megan says. <laughs> Forbin, thank you. You guys are so supportive. Uh, so rare there's no desert reserve on it. Yeah. And this is nice. I really enjoy a perpetual date that doesn't have a cyclops on it. And here's an example of a watch that doesn't have a cyclops on it. Uh, the condition is fantastic, and it's just so crisp. 1951. It's amazing. Of that time, look how good it is. Really. Pretty spectacular. Let's get rid of that. Sorry. Nice looking piece, got to say. Overall, pretty impressive. Uh, do enjoy the, the, the bezel and all those little aspects there. A watch of its time, yes, but also pretty contemporary for what it is, what it represents. So yeah, not not bad. I'm into the cyc you know, No Cyclops. I mean, it's it's nice that it's become a part of their aesthetic, I guess. It's one of their calling cards, but really, I mean, it's it's not necessary. I think this is just so much crisp. Also, roulette and everything there too. I wonder what this will go for. Something something doesn't tell me that it's gonna be it's gonna be more than this. I think I would imagine between 25 plus. Yeah, next up, a Lungan Zona. Wow, from 1950. Look at that. And now we get to more diversity and peculiarities. Jeez. This is the thing, 179 lots, and we are approaching the two and a half hour mark. It's a lot of work, i got to say. This, this is, it's taxing on the brain, continually looking at this, you know. Uh, it's jazzy, looking at it, says. Very rare and historically important. Okay, I won't look at the specs. I don't know the history of this, 1950. So this was, you know, post-war. These were still being manufactured, I guess, under different occupation. Uh, what's the size? 40 mils in diameter. I'm not a fan of those lugs at all. The lugs look a little bit um, too small for what the watch is, wouldn't you say? Okay, not bad. Chrome plated. Oof. Uh, that's, that's a bit of a, a fail, sadly. But I'm sure most of these were back in the day, though, right? Um, Forbin says it makes me think of mechanical pencils on graph paper. This one, yes, I would agree. Definitely looks like something of, of the older house. Stingy lugs, I think Forbin says. That's good. Okay, well, a Lungo and Zona, they were doing some crazy stuff back then, I guess, under different times. But uh, moving on, I, I like what I really love is the fact that you get a NATO strap with this watch. Uh, what? Is this military spec? Was this, in, I, I don't know, really don't know. International Watch Company, a rare and attractive stainless steel wristwatch with tropical chestnut. This is pretty stunning. 1942, 38 mil diameter. I gotta love that hand wound crown. The way the crown integrates into the case is very nice. The color, stunning. Uh, that that tropical effect is caramel. I mean, they should call it chestnut. I would call it like a caramel color instead. I mean, even the subdial has a has a accented element to it too. Really clean. Roman numerals between 12 and 18. It's planned on going for. Yeah. Great looking model. I, again, I think the way they've done the crown integration into the case is nice. Very, very nice. Size wise, 38 mils in diameter for a 1942 model. Decent. Uh, between 12 and 18,000. I'd imagine it's going to go for a bit more than that, maybe. Um, photo looks filtered or desaturated. I think they probably doctored it a little bit, maybe. It's hard to tell there. Eh? It really is hard to tell whether or not these watches are manipulated at all in the photographs. I'm sure. Sticky toffee. That's pretty good. Okay, moving on to number 120. Okay, now we're looking at kind of Thunderbird. Okay, I, I assumed it was a Thunderbird, but this one doesn't have a Cyclops on the dial, and I think it, it does work a lot more in its favor, don't you reckon? Uh, fine and rare, interesting. Like, you notice I'm not even reading the descriptions anymore. By by 100, I was just sick up and fed of it, you know? Uh, Jubilee bracelets, pretty crisp. The Thunderbird is a great model because it gives you the, the date just with an added feature of a turnograph, basically. Not for everyone. Uh, this being, I don't know if this this came after the, the Air King. I feel like there was some kind of cross-pollination there. Between four and 8,000, 36 mil diameter, circa 1961. Okay, not bad. I can see many aren't very keen. Oval dial, I, I really don't know. It does look like a pie pan in a way, actually, if we have a look. Maybe, I don't know. Between four and eight, I'm sure it'll fetch that. Who knows? 
Oof. Right. 1019. Gotta love a 1019. Not so much of a fan of the white dial, but the black variant. If we can find a black dial model, which is rarer, very good. The 1019 Milgauss, I think, is on par with the 1016 Explorer in many ways when it comes to its uniqueness, the sterility, all the other factors you want to add. Uh, we know the Milgauss being the scientist's watch. This is from 1964, uh, between 15 and 25,000. Uh, I'm not a fan of the white dial, though. Sadly, the white dials, I think there's like for every... For every one black dial, there's there's three white dials or something like that. Much harder to come across. And unfortunately, it just loses a lot of its punch when you look at the, the batons and everything on the dial without it being contrasting in a way. But it's the small touches. I mean, being a master of restraint. Rolex, if you're watching, I know someone from Rolex is watching. You, would, you know, at the two and a half hour mark, it's, it's expected, right? You no know, simple red accents. This little red, this little red arrow on the hand. That's all you need, and this watch just sings. If they wanted to recreate the Milgauss, they could do such an excellent job. They are the masters of restraint, and they can use this as such a good piece of of inspiration to uh, to evolve it. So yeah, ten nineteen, great looking piece, antique magnetic. We know the story. Um, right, I'm gonna get into the comments. I've missed you guys. Sorry about that. Ooh, here we go. So you see what I mean? All of a sudden, we start cropping up to some really... This is a Bundeswehr, right? Bundeswehr. Always get the names wrong. This is a unique piece. It really is nice, too. Uh, 1974, 42 mil diameter. Between 12 and 18 is expected. It's got a Bund strap. It's, got, it's, it's the Hoyer Pilot Chrono that we all deserve. What have I been missing in the chats? No one's been tagging me, and it's, it's so disappointing. I need to get some more questions going, get my brain a bit more wired up in other directions. Decent size. Yeah, I mean, from 1974, hell of a good size. This is, this is what you call forward thinking. Um, there are a few brands out there. Looks like a Casio, looky here says. Ooh. Um, the Zin 158, I think, is the reference that pays tribute to this. There are many others out there, but Hoyer is the brand that has the, the rights to it, the original rights, you know. Um, the rotating bezel, I imagine it's PVD coated. I, oh, so I'm looking at the description, Norwegian Air Force. Isn't this cool to actually get a proper description accompanied by numerous documents and fighter pilot's helmets? But they still use rare and attractive in the description every single time. Pretty cool. I do like the fact that it has all the little extra accoutrement with it. Uh, nice looking piece overall. Can't go wrong. This again being inspired by the same kind of big eye, Longjean big eye history uh, and everything in between. It's great. It's a real functional mil spec model through and through. And now we get to, as far as I know, the only Speedmaster on this. And I deliberately wore the Seamaster 57 for this reason because when we talk about very rare and highly attractive, how many of these do you see next to the myriads of 55, 12s, 13s, 16, 75s, 10, 16s? You know, it's like uh, these are some of the rarest out there, but it's it's just avoided. It's not spoken about very much. Um, right, right. I'm looking at these these questions. Perez asking me what's going to be my next watch. Mm, good question. I really don't know. I want to buy a guitar first. I think actually, I'm quite sick up and fed for hunting. I'm, hunting for the next watch, I think, has taken a bit of a back seat in a way. I've handled a Rolex and a Tudor and. Uh, I'm definitely on the. I'm looking for Rolexes, but I'm not. I'm not yearning for one at the moment. You know what I mean? Um, oh, so some more questions. What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? Unladen swallow. Can you be a bit more specific there, Neferion? Like, what is this? What would the swallow be carrying exactly? Are we talking? Uh, got uh, got eggs on board, or do we have nest components? All right. So. Let's discuss this. CK2998-2. Uh, tropical dial. Yeah, yeah. Tachometer bezel and bracelet. That's wrong. A tachometer bezel is for top speed. A tachymeter bezel is for distance. So it's, it's the wrong measurement there. I don't know why they botched that one. Unless I'm wrong. I have been doing this for nearly three hours. Tropical dial. This is how you do a tropical dial. Hmm. Uh, so hold on a second. 
a nefarian you asked me that question and it's and it's that's from the holy grail right i think you just mentioned you're a king you know that's from that's from uh, monty python right god i can't remember the answer that, that's very good if someone could give me the answer to that i love that it's very funny good good question there nefarian i'm still on fire two and a half hours in ghosted bezel i mean this this watch has a lot of character to it straight lugs lollipop hand i mean this is what makes it pretty rare in in the scheme of things now mega has done some recreations back in the day with uh with these models with the blue variants and the black panda dial models too between 35 and 70 yeah i think it's acceptable uh, it does have paperwork i think um <laughs> some more questions about answers to life should i leave this on for a while just to wash the taste of the, the octopus state just out of our mouths and, and many others <laughs> run away Oh, uh, no. Holy Grail references. Here we come. A coconut. Right. Nefarion says, I should know these things, yeah. Uh, Underachieving says, what is the answer to life, universe, and everything? I've been thinking about that a lot, you know. Actually, let's get philosophical. Why the hell not? We're sitting, no one else, no one's watching. Uh, I'm going to jump to the next. No, I'm not. I'm going to stay with this. Um, maybe I'll flick through. Okay, so uh, Constellation. Okay, that's enough of that. Um, okay, 1945. This is a good example. U.S. Army engraving on the case back. This is a very clean, clean example. <sighs> I've in a general direction. You guys are the worst. So my, so my answer to life, universe, and everything underachieving, let's try. I'm going to try my best to be philosophical. Maybe you can take something away from this, ladies and gents. Um, I've been listening to a lot of... Um, what's his name? <sighs> I don't know his first name. Surname is Kant, K-A-N-T, the, philosoph the philosopher. And the universalizability principle and morality and how powerful it is for us as humans to treat humans as ends in themselves and not means to an end. And I think if more people adopted that principle in the way they handle daily situations, daily life, We'd have a different existence on this planet in many ways. Treat people as ends to themselves, not means to an end. So in that way, don't look at someone as something that you're going to get something out of. Rather, treat them for who they are, what they are. Yeah, I'm Emmanuel Kant. Thank you. Thank you, Laurent. I don't know how I managed to get that out of nowhere, but that's what I've been enjoying. Uh, universalizability principle, maxims. He was big on his different maxims when it comes to morality bloody good i've been enjoying that right so very rare well preserved this is not very rare there's many of these 34.5 mils i expected this watch to be about 38 mils 1945 between 9 and 18 grand it's just a gorgeous model the way they did these dials back in the day really really sharp syringe hands yeah it's beautiful it is beautiful we're doing pretty well ladies and gents we're about to hit the uh, getting close to the three armor oh my god am i hitting the repeat button or something <laughs> uh so british classic liberalism no looky here that's uh, no, that was definitely not the approach i was looking for but uh yeah other answers to the universe and everything uh what's another good one um i think what's helped me through a lot of times of you know downness because i've had them serious i mean this has been such a fantastic distraction in my life but i think what's very important to realize no matter what you're going through is that somewhere out there there's someone who does love you out there for who you are, for what you do. And it's important to remember that because as long as you are loved, then you will feel a bit better about yourself. That's another important uh, element to follow. Okay, so what is this? 6265. See, this is getting so boring now. We're getting philosophical. <laughs> uh, it's, it's tagged Libyan Army at the back. Okay. Not bad. It's a cool model. Uh, we've seen quite a few of these already. 37 mils, 1978. This will probably go for a lot of money. Uh, wristwatch with bracelet made for living. No, no box papers reference. Repeated serial number. I don't know what that means. Sam, Sam Ray is joining. He's back. You've missed a lot of philosophical uh, points and questions, so uh, good thing you did. And, and Aaron asks me, do I love you? I love you all for different reasons. I think it's important. Uh, Right, Longines next. Didn't they recreate this recently, I think? 1935, US Army edition, between 30 and 50 grand. 
I, th- I actually used this as a reference in the, the reissue watch video back in the day. Um, a couple of months back, also I focused specifically on reissue models, and this was one that came up. A very unique model from Longines. Officer's case back, gotta, gotta love that. Really is nice. The condition for what it is, 1935, and it still looks as good as it does. Now, the onion crown offset pusher is definitely divisive. You can't wear this on your left wrist. It would be a mess unless you want to have neck problems. But uh, yeah, it's it's one of those original pilot chronos, 1935, just transitioning out of the First World War. Planes were now a little bit more functional. And yeah, first step into a bold new world. <clears throat> 128 next. Oh, now we're talking. So, Lucky here says, I'm a decent guy. Keep it a good word. Thank you, Lucky here. Really. Uh, I'd love to get distracted and watch this too. Yeah, by all means. It's such a good way to just just kill time, right? Um, Daytona's a breaking record, Ethan says. Yeah, I agree. What else has been going on in the chats? I'm missing you all here. Sorry. Uh, if you want to tag me again for more questions, by all means, go for it between 60 and 120. Right. So what does this have? Fine and very rare. Mm -hmm. Gas escape valve. Oh, really? It's a sea dweller and it has a gas escape valve. This is news to me. Uh, Bracelet guarantee box made for Comex. Thank you for that really comprehensive description. Uh, Nice example, 1982. So I'm guessing it's the latter years of the, the Comex variants from back in the day. Really cool example, engraved case back, which looks awesome. Uh, yeah, all in all, condition is superb. I imagine it has been polished once. Um, yeah, what what did the Romans ever do for us, Mark? The aqueduct? What else? Roads? Uh, democracy? That was so good. I freaking love it. It's Life of Brian. Absolutely hilarious. Watch Monty Python, ladies and gents. You'll have it. You'll have a good laugh. So Megan loves her comexes. Yes, I think we can all agree they are particular so this probably has a a sapphire crystal if i remember right this being a triple six which is also pretty important for the reference line no but i mean really gas escape valve this is i don't know if it's amateur hour or if it's just you know they they need to be specific i don't notice anything about the paperwork that comes with this model a comex with without its dive log and all of that i'm surprised that those exist actually if people actually lost those dive logs to go with these. All right, going to move on through. It's a really nice example. The reference is so good. The quality, the finishing case dial is immaculate. These watches are minefields. And it's expected to go between 60 and 120. So good luck. Oh, okay. This is another gem of the show. Reference 6204. And I want to get back into the chat. Everyone's laughing about Monty Python. Yep. Uh, Eric saying working watches have no boxes as they were shipped to rigs in deco chambers. Sorry, sorry, Eric. I, I'm, I'm not on your way there. Uh, what's, a, what's a deco chamber? Can you please help me there? As in decompression chamber. Is that what you... Okay, okay. So what do we have here? This is a very early Submariner. This is probably one of the first references to have Submariner printed on the dial. 6204. What does it say here? Impressive and extremely well preserved. Impressive. They used attractive. Let's try something else. Uh, Eighty thousand to one hundred and sixty. And I mean, this is this is the real starting point. The first, I'd imagine, the first reference to have Submariner printed on the dial. Right after, was this before or after the five five zero eight? I don't know. Decompression. Okay. So so was I right? I don't know if I was. Eric, Eric knows his stuff when it comes to when you know when it comes to diving and, and all those specs for sure. So lollipop second hand, something else to point out here. I don't know how well you can see it. A lacquer dial with bracelets. It's in good condition too. I mean the the, the lugs and I don't know how they managed to keep these in such good shape. And I guess this is what you're paying for at the end of the day, is that excessive. I just find it so funny that the watch like this is demanding such a price. What is the, how did this all begin? How did this all start? You know, stainless steel. This watch was a precursor. There's no depth rating to it. I'd imagine it's 100 meters waterproof. Um, is this a daily wearer, Wally says? Yes, I would say it is. Pencil styled hands are just gorgeous. Uh, not the easiest to read. They look kind of the same length, but uh, I think, yeah, I mean, it's, 
It's a gem, another classic, like the 6538, 6536, all those references we've seen already. Um, all right, I'm going to catch up with you in the chat again, if I can, while I move to the next reference. It's a gorgeous example, as as Megan says. Yeah, I agree. There's another really cool one coming up soon, I think. I hope. Another, Otavia. Ooh, 1966. This is the kind of watch I would bid on. Between 20 and 30,000, they're asking for this. Attractive, an attractive stainless steel chronograph. This is the most, I can't believe it. They've actually made a succinct statement for once. That's a first. I'm I'm impressed. I'm proud. Uh, we only got only by the time we got to lot 130 did they decide it's time to to turn it down a little bit. So Octavia with a ghosted bezel, uh, reverse panda dial. Got to love the loom. Got to love that contrast there. Between 20 and 30 grand. 39 mils in 1966. Yeah, who doesn't like an Octavia? Birth your watch. Eric, said, I'm sorry, Mark says. Love the bezel. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Birth year, 1966, Mark. It's a good year. It was a good year. I remember it fondly. Moving on next to reference price, not so much. Megan, yeah, I agree. It's it's pretty high, especially with no braces and everything there. Uh, oh, okay. Eagle beak time. Is this an eagle beak? It looks like one. Pointed crown guards? Pointed. It's not an eagle beak. Um, missing... First description done by a sane person, Andreas says, yes. I, I don't know. Maybe it was just, they were, oh, shame. This image didn't load up. Um, oh, so the 5512, I really adore these models. What I find entertaining, when you look at the history of the 5512 and how they were just so unsure about how to work crown guards back in the day, they started off as these huge squared off parts. And then to save to save cases, they just shaved them off. And then we got the eagle beaks and the pointed, and they didn't know what they were doing, really. Uh, it's it's just funny. But everything about the 5512, I imagine what refs 1962, is it a, it's a gloss dial? No, it looks kind of matte to me. Condition is superb for what it is. I really enjoy when the dial is just so clean and there's just, you know, the patina is even everywhere. It's a dot. Oh, hold on a sec. It's got a dot on the, ex so it's exclamation point, I think they call it. And I'm avoiding the description because it can just get so, let's see, automatic. Very important to know. God, with the center seconds, glossy. So it is a gloss dial, uh, exclamation uh, pointed. Okay. Nice condition. Doesn't look like it comes with box or papers. Um, love the 5512 daily driver for me along with 5513. I mean, Megan, that's such a fantastic formula, really. Uh, it just does it all. The Submariner is a watch that do, does do it all. Do's does it all. Love the domed crystal as well. There's so many facets and elements to it that makes it sing in different ways. Yeah, spoken about these so many times. The condition is also very good for what it is. Uh, and everyone's commenting on Eric. I don't know what's going on in the chat. I'm missing you all here. Again, if I'm not tagged, it, I can't see it fast enough. Uh, 5512 is a gem. I'm pretty sure we'll find a 5513 along the way. Ooh, I really like this. 6239. No, sorry, 6241 with the 6239 case back, meaning that it's kind of a Franken. Um, 1968, Paul Newman dial, tropical subdials. Now, this is gorgeous. I love the contrast of the bezel on these. I really do. Uh, and the tropical dial is also in such good condition. There's something about the, the contrast, I mean, especially in this, the contrasting black on the brown with the cream. Yeah, it sings. It really is stunning. So Mark says, do the people who sell these watches actually know about the watches? Good point. I mean, this is all inventory at the end of the day. I don't know. I mean, they sell directly to Philips. And again, the buyer, the, the real collectors who are buying these aren't complete morons in the sense that they know what they're doing. They know what they're spending these things on. They know what they're following. Uh, so they don't need these kinds of descriptions attached to them. If anyone knows a Comex Sea Dweller, they know it has a helium escape valve, say. Uh, in this case, all the collectors will be looking at this for the, the case quality. This is so important. I mean, you have to really scrutinize all the little facets here. It's so difficult. I mean, when it comes to buying a watch like this, you need a loop. You need to actually have this in your hands to check it under the microscope because there's so many little elements that could be out of place. And just one small, if, if the hands are wrong, 
the value of it just goes down the toilet. Between 150 and 250 is expected to go, which I think is just ludicrous for what this watch is. No bracelets, no box, no papers, nada. Just the head. Um, yeah, it's okay. I do love the colors, though. The the tropical with the suede, suede-ish leather is pretty nice. 6241, the thin bezel with a chapter ring on the dial. Give it depth. Floats. If that's the right word. Yes, it does. Uh, there's there's so many so many aspects. I do love this. I don't know if it's a capped bezel. I can't remember how they did this. If it's if it's Bakelite, if what was it Bakelite back then? 1968. Yeah, nice looking piece. Really is. Uh, probably of all the watches that we've seen in this category, I do prefer the bezel on these models. Also, does increase the watch's size on the wrist, by the way. So it's a 37, but would probably wear more like a 39 overall. Uh, but yeah, we have Daytona fatigue, as you can probably hear by my voice, a 6200. Now, this is when it gets quite particular and interesting with an Explorer dial. What a peculiar combo we have here. So highly rare, as you would expect. Um, 1954, between 350 and 700 they expected to go for. Yikes. So what we basically have here is your 6538 big crown case but we have an explorer dial and black hands i was gonna get to that in a moment but it's how they did this with the explorer dial i guess it was all experimentation everything was just sort of thrown together and and hoped something would work is this the guide who is this mandani editor i don't know what this book is about anyway got to maybe it's featured in the book uh i guess that's like the heritage i don't know uh i the hands though Huh. So my thinking is, what are we talking 1954? So we're talking radium. I feel like the hands are radium and the dial is tritium and has been re-loomed. Maybe. Let me know. These are these are very sought after apparently, but there are some better examples out there. That looks pretty nice though. Seeing this on the wrist, it looks like a custom job. It does look like a custom job, like someone had this done artificially, you know? Uh, it just doesn't look like a like a sub that you'd expect to see. Now, I guess everything is radium, Dan says. You know, I would imagine. I mean, back then, they, that's what they were dealing with. Why is it that the hands have gone black, though? Was that just, uh, did they say something in the description? Probably not. And I'm not going to scroll down. If Again, the link's in the description if you'd like to actually follow these these pieces a bit closely. But so, yeah, 369, Explorer Dial on a sub divisive not everyone is very keen on it you know my love for quarter arabics on dials so yes it does get a pass for me this, this model don't know so much about also something else that i don't get and what i find peculiar is that how how has the dial has gone this color and the bezel has stayed relatively the same hmm so does that mean that the dial maybe has been relumed the bezel has been replaced and they still expect it to go between 350 and 700. I don't know how many of these they made, but but surely, I don't know. Again, vintage is a minefield, ladies and gents. You have to know your stuff, and I definitely do not. So, yeah, nice piece. I do enjoy the, the aesthetic, but uh, the colors, I don't know what it means, what actually happened. The pip looks suspect, too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, these didn't have pips back then. They fell out, right? Okay, going to filter through to the next this looks like a watch assembled by spare parts. I'm just going to say that much. A universal. Okay. That's something different. 1945, between eight and 14 grand, it's going to go for. Uh, yeah, not bad. We've seen, I mean, we've seen so many of these calendar chronographs. And yeah, I mean, it's there everywhere, right? I'm sure this will go pretty easily. Or maybe it won't need a reserve. I don't know. Looks like a Patek, Ethan says. I mean, don't they all? Don't they all? A Tissot. Wow. Lot offered with no reserve. They really want to get rid of it. So from 1940, 35 mils. Fine and unusual. Hmm. Nice of them to describe it that way. Uh, so this, from 1940, it's got the telemeter scale. So you'd imagine this is a wartime watch. Uh, you look at the, I do really love the lugs. This is integrated lugs before they were hip before they were cool. Uh, yeah, there's just so many little facets. The dial, you can imagine these dials were just assembled from parts bins, but uh, yeah, 35 mil, difficult to wear nowadays, I think. 
Oh, geez. Now we're back to the Pateks. A rare and attractive stainless steel, 15 to 25 is planned on going for. This one does nothing for me. Next, uh, another Patek 3418, previously unknown and astoundingly rare navy blue. Well, if it's astoundingly rare, why are they expecting it to go between 15 and 30 and not, you know, six figures? It's kind of like an ellipse in a way. Not a bad looking watch, but I mean, 34 mil diameter. What, what is going on? Right, next up. Oy. Tiffany & Co. 1951, 37.5 mil. Yeah, so I mean, I think you, you can start to see a, a pattern going on here that the watches that we, that's, that's gorgeous. The watches that we have been uh, looking at five months ago, the selection of pieces that we saw were a lot more diverse, lots more variety within the zone. This this auction lot seems to be so focused on the classic Patek dress pieces primarily, more than the vintage Rolex models, which is a surprise. Um, between 10 and 20, 1930, it was made 26 mil width, 39 lug to lug. Wow, really? 39, that's huge. That's quite impressive, actually. You would expect it to be like 36 or something. Uh, gotta love, gotta love the Breguet numerals, though. Nice, nice looking piece. Next, it's Saturday already. Mark, you are terrible. And any any more questions, ladies and gents? I mean, I'm, I'm, this is getting this is getting exhausting looking at the same watch over and over again. Beautification, 1949. Look at those lugs. This is a charming piece. I do like it quite a bit. And that movement. Can you believe that movement was made? You know, 60, 60 something years ago. Again, my, my numbers are bad at the three hour mark. Nice looking model. Very old school though. 36 mil diameter. Too many identical patterns. I mean, blue shirt, it's, it's nuts. I mean, the references. We've seen this dial repeated, I would say, maybe five times, six times on these pieces already, which is crazy. I mean, you just, even, even the Pateks had the exact same dial layout. The movement. It's incredible to consider that this movement is like 70 years old and still looks as good as it does. Am I, am I saying this right? 70 years old. My numbers, again, 71 years old. Thank you, Sam Ray. How did I get that? Moving on to one, four, one. Hmm. Yeah, so now we have De Deco resurgence again. 1957 between 12 and 18. <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, it's... It's it's stylish, I guess. It's deco-ish. It's 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 a dress dress oriented piece. Uh, big for the time. Ninety thirty six mil, as mentioned in the in the chat from Zeus. I do I do enjoy the way they've done the the numerals on the dial. Notice how it plays in the light. Oh wow, that application was a bit strange. Notice how they they almost have these little chamfers to them that play in the light differently. Beautification, 1950s. They were going all over the show trying to trying to play around. Again, all of these place your advanced bids. Hmm. 1945. A very rare. <laughs> okay. This is getting this is getting enough now. Enormously charming. So at lot 142, you start to be a bit more explorative with your words. Enormously charming, huh? 37 mil diameter, uh, pink dial, multi-scale. I mean, just typical war watch from back then. Love that crystal. Yeah, I would wear this watch. Apart from the age on the dial, though, I'm not so much of a fan of it looking a little bit a little bit hammered. But I guess it's not waterproof, so you would expect it, right? And it's better to have a dial that's that's seen some life. I mean, remember, this is this is an ancient piece. Subdials are small. Interesting. I mean, we, we translate this into the six, you know, the, the pre Daytona references, like the, I'm never going to get the reference right. You know, the 50s era Daytonas, and they have the same kind of layout with the subdials, don't you think? Um, even the script bot got bored. Eric Bell says, I mean, right? Even, even it's trying to be more creative. It's collecting. You know what, Eric? I maybe that's the way they illustrate it. Maybe it's not Joe or Susan behind a desk typing all of these out. Maybe it is just a script. But this is great. This is great. This is beautiful. Um, Andre's saying you have talked about Smiths, but would you do a video talking about Steinhardt? Sorry if you had already. I did. You know, I started this channel looking at homage watches a long time ago. 
I've removed most of those videos because it doesn't doesn't really line up with what we do now for the most part. But uh, yes, I've spoken about Steinhardt quite a bit. I turned mine into a Frankenstein. I completely butchered it for the sake of it, for fun. I took a Dremel tool to it and had a good time. Bleached the hell out of it. And, uh, you know, they're good watches. I don't know what movements they're using today because ETA is now pulling the plug. So are they going to switch to Salitas? I, I really don't know. It would be nice to uh, know the story. So what is this? A 6305, rare and attractive. I've got the bots back. Black lacquer dial, 1954. I love the no Cyclops. There's just so much elegance to the way they did their, their cases back then with that gorgeous fluting on the bezel. It's subtle. It's not in your face, you know? Um, yeah, between 30 and 60 grand, though. I mean, there's this uh, next. Right. Mind, uh, here we go. I was talking about a Patek reference that had cases like this. Here's an example. Very rare and important. 3448 if you'd like to look at this, from 1975, sticker on the back, impressive. We've seen so many of these now, it's nuts. Uh, hair metal. Thank you for being so succinct, Megan, it's very appreciated. Uh, I'm loving it, I'm loving the chat, and I'm missing you, you're all who's uh, commenting in there. If you'd like to tag me about something, about anything. Right, uh, I'm gonna start singing just now. I don't know. So 6234, that's the reference I was thinking about a second ago. Um, look at those subdials. Reminds me, I mean, they just pretty much stole those 40 subdials and the, the, the dial itself and put it in this. 1959, and it still had a telemeter scale. Talk about dealing with your extra stock, you know? Uh, so 250,000 to 500,000 is the expected price. I like this. I The condition. The condition is pretty stellar, really. I mean, look at that case. No age. It looks brand spanking new. Yeah, I mean, it's even got a, how, is it deep, how does it have a sticker on the back? Is this new old stock? Something. Uh, what do they say? Exceptionally well-preserved, la, la, la. Yeah. 36 mil case. Yeah, I would wear this. This is something very attractive. I need a 6234. Yeah, I do in my life. I, 500 grand to spare. I mean, it's, you know... I'm looking for a guitar at the moment. I think I've got a, a bit of change to spare on, on this. Uh, <laughs> I like your watch. Yeah, it's important, Les. Yeah, it is. I, I agree. What makes this important? I'm oh, sorry, guys. I'm missing you in the chat. If you'd like to repeat those questions again, a germ magnet. Can you imagine the... That's a good point, Neferion. Can you imagine the crud that is collected on, on here over time? I don't think this watch has ever been worn, honestly. It looks so crisp. No, no, no dents on the case or anything. But for 500 grand, hmm, right, next, sector dial. Okay, this is nice because it doesn't look like every other Patek. Reference 130, an extremely rare and supreme. <laughs> the bot, as Eric says, is having a field day now. Supremely attractive. Hmm, I mean, who, who does this stuff? Two-tone sector dial between two what? Between 250 and 500, they expect this to go for. 33 millimeters from 1937. Who doesn't love a good sector dial? I mean, really. And asking about the guitar B dev, yes, I'm saving up for a Martin. I've I've decided I need to get another one. The one I have is in storage and I can't wait that long. Because if I have an acoustic, I can actually play on air. We have a good time. I could have requests and whatever else. I'm not that good, but yeah, we have a good time. This is a nice looking watch. It's not 500 grand, though. It's not 500 grand. Uh, talking about Led Zeppelin and Monty Python. Hold on a second. I'm going to get there. Another. What? How much? 1.2. No, come on. Um, so Led Zeppelin, Peter Grant, helped finance Monty Python. He did, right? Yes, I remember that story. Oh, I can talk about Led Zeppelin again. We're getting into it. It's so funny. Sometimes I rewatch these shows and I'm, I've missed so many of your questions and I, I do apologize. Like I'm, I'm flitting between one screen to another. So another example of, okay, that's cool. Uh, another example of an extremely important, interesting, well-preserved. Mm -hmm. uh, 37 millimeter from 1972. Yeah, we've seen enough of these. Uh, Eric, I'm sorry, Russell does like this model, 2499. How do you how do you remember these kinds of references? 
really it's i i i struggle i really struggle with understanding uh but again speaks to patek's language we know patek's language pretty well mark says we are 83 percent of the way through we can do this my god we've just crossed the three hour mark we can't make this a four hour show all right next more very funky lugs you know what they look like call them aspirin lugs don't you think they look like aspirin pills that you would pop? That's weird. So in 1943, 34 mil, 34 mils, between 80, 40 and 80 grand. Yay. Uh, gotta say, that movement still looks pretty, okay, this movement looks like it's, it's had a hell of a life, but still, it looks kind of modern, you know, considering. So what's another chat just going, Glisken, Knightsbridge, uh, Moonface, Eric's, yes, yeah, so watch and pray. Those, those references, Instead of moon phase, moon face. I like that. Um, it says the reference right at the top. I know, but I'm trying to avoid all of this guff that I have to flip through. Salmon dial, okay. Bean-shaped lugs, they call them. Okay, nice. 149. My God, there's so many of these watches. I mean, you would swear with seeing all of these, uh, it's like, it's. It, you'd swear that these aren't rare because there's just so many of them, right? Uh, so what? Uh, rare and attractive, yeah, yeah. Uh, another sector dial kind of inspired variant. Oh, they actually mentioned that. That's nice. 1937, 33 mils. 33 mils. Yeah. I can't get over the sizes of these. I mean, 33 is is quite small, considering that it's a chronograph. And it's, it's great to know that uh, sizes, I don't know how people read these back in the day. Honestly, I really don't. Nice. I mean, I've got to say the the combination of lines and everything there does make for quite a pleasurable reading experience. But for the size, if this was thirty eight mils, talk about new uh, contemporary, rare and attractive. Andreas, don't worry, it's every what the Anwar Piguet, nineteen ninety three. So this is a birthday watch for me. Um, unusual and elegant yellow gold. Is this like the you the Ulysses Nardan freak before the freak happened? Okay, so it's kind of like a it's kind of like an Uruk, right? So you've got the rotating pen. Okay, I'm not a fan of these these transparent uh, dials on it though. It kind of ruins the the overall aesthetic. Ugh. Between six and eight, they have high expectations for this. They ate plenty of carrots for eyesight. Good one, Megan. Car carrots are supposed to help you. I, I don't know if that's a, a urban legend about them helping you see in the dark better. It's all about the blood flow to the the retina and the cornea and everything else. Uh, keep those vessels dilated, ladies and gentlemen. I've still got half a coffee in front of me. I need it. We've got, what, 29 to go, and we are not going to hit the four-hour mark. Yes! How good is that for a change? Um, so 36 mil diameter. Yeah, this is this is a bit, yeah, not a fan. Omar Piguet, lot offered with no reserve. They have high hopes for this one too. Hitting the coffee. <laughs> Extremely slim, they now say. Okay. Uh, be good if they actually showed us a side profile of the watch to prove its slimness. So I imagine it's manual wine from 1950. Beautification. We see the deco. We see the engine turned bezel. And I'm missing you all in the chat here. So apologies, ladies and gents. Yeah, Logan, I'm a 93er. Yes, end of 93, so technically kind of kind of like a midway 94. I don't know. I believe they used a monocle to read those small watches. Maybe they did. Good point, Neferion. Uh, and everyone's mentioning AP, and everyone, <laughs> Megan doesn't even say next anymore, just the fast forward button. That's that's just rude. That's just rude, Megan. I do like the engine turning. Next. Mm. Holy. Well... <clears throat> I do feel for the people that bid on these kinds of watches at the end of the show. I mean, this is like slim pickings when the show is really coming to an end. 1959. Yikes. Next. Uh, mm, another faceted crystal. How is this? Is this just because they couldn't bend the crystal back then? So they, they just stuck two halves on. I mean, that's what they did with, with cars and everything too. I have never seen this before. So every time you look at the watch, you get this big divide between the, oh, help me, help me, guys. I'm, I'm, is this the coffee that's doing it to my brain, or is this between 15 and 25? You know what? No. No, it's not. Next. 
Ooh, okay. This is an important watch. Mega Quartz. I think Megan is right. <laughs> so uh, impressive Quartz Adventurine. I mean, there's like, there could be a lot more specific with the description here. I mean, this was Omega's highest caliber Quartz movement. Watch the interview with Roger Smith uh, at Odinki. This is pretty cool. Stupidly accurate. The the beat rate was just ridiculous. The the battery would run out like after six months or something because of how accurate this was. So it's pretty good watchmaking for what it is, but it's it's an it's, it's kind of an it's kind of like the the, the Casio G Shock before it became popular. Okay. Oh god. Oh no. This is when I lose it, everyone. This is when I lose it, especially this. Especially that. Right. So, another a loss for words watch, wouldn't you say? Extra, very attractive. I don't know who's writing this stuff. Yeah, AP Quartz. Mm. It's a gem. It's a hidden gem. You know? Right. I, I'm not even going to describe. Oh. Okay. This is something different. 1969 attractive rhodium plated solar clock with original box and certificate. This looks like something the Dieter Rams would design, I think. I actually like to know who designed this back then. I do enjoy this presentation. This is quite nice. Nice change of pace. As long as it's not a Daytona again. <laughs> uh, Mark, Mark, you are the worst. You guys, the fact that you guys are actually awake at the moment, it's like two in the morning in Paris and, and like one in the morning here and yeah you guys are great really the fact that you're sticking with me okay some 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 glory we can arrive at so this is a, a 222 no it's not it's a 44018 i've learned something from this description box tonight uh this is a very cool piece this is what sparked the overseas the gen 1 gen 2 gen this is the first model and there's something so attractive about the bottle cap bezel, uh, 1980, which is a bit later in the phase. Just the small little touches like the Calat the Calat Calatrava, Maltese cross at the corner. The bracelet is rare and attractive, as uh, we, we know. Okay, that's a bit tacky. Uh, but overall, it's it's cool. And I feel like these have become very sought after. I th I've, I'm pretty sure these go for a lot more than what they're planning, between 15 and 25 and the next one up is in gold. So this is basically, just remember, 1970, what, 76, 78? I don't know when the Royal Oaks and them were introduced. But uh, this was basically Vacheron trying to ride on the coattails. And I don't think these were very successful, uh, sadly. But it was just the craze to have these integrated cases and lugs and bracelets. Stunning. I got to say, I really I like the subtlety of the bottle cap effect and how it works, the overall aesthetic. And then we move to a solid yellow gold model. I don't know if it speaks so as much as if it was white gold, yes, but the, the full yellow gold is a bit much. 1980, I mean, it's at the height. Hold on. Was this watch originally two tone? I don't understand that. But yeah, the aesthetic is just something else. It's not trying to shout about its persona, its presence. And that's actually a very good picture. Let me go back. It's really not trying to shout about what it is. And that's so important today because we see it so often with all the other brands. Everything has to be polished and reflective. Notice that nothing is polished on this watch. It's all brushed everywhere. And the size, 38 mils, excellent size. Uh, doesn't have a running seconds hand by the looks of things. They did a lot of things right here. I wish more brands would be a bit more attentive to those little details. The bracelet is also stunning. I could talk about this piece for a long time. In fact, I did. All about the Vacheron overseas, why you should pay attention to it. 36-ish, yeah. Gold. The gold is a little bit excessive. It's a watch that Elvis would wear. Yeah, I agree. Um, I do prefer the steel because things like, I love how that cross stands out and also how the, the patina on the dial stands a bit nicer. It's a bit more casual. I mean, look at that. It's like gun metal. Yeah, I could spend a lot more time talking about these. Really nice pieces. Oh, yes, of course we go back to the Royal Oak. 1978. Is this an original? 
I think it is. Uh, highly rare, well preserved. Mm -hmm. Seen that one before. Uh, no box by the looks of things, but an original Royal Oak. Pretty good. Pretty nice. The way you can tell little quirky things like the white gold screws have, have aged over time, it's actually quite difficult to tell unless you have a look at the case back and, and the clasp and things like that. You would swear that this is a modern jumbo. As like someone like me, who's quite uninitiated in this area, you would look at this and think, hmm, could it be a 15202? 5402ST. Nice looking model. Between 30 and 50. Yeah, I feel like this is going to go for like well over 100. I mean, you just know. Especially by the time you get to the auction here at the end, uh, people are going to be chomping at the bit to spend some money on one of these. Uh, a D serial, Megan says. I mean, how do you? Oh, number D. Thank you. I tell you, I, I'm so not versed with these models and all the little factors and specifications. But yeah, horrible quality. I have one. Interesting, the ferry on super delicate. These, these roll, hold on a second. Where are you? Ethan says, and that's the thing. I mean, the stainless steel for all its uh, fashionable appeal on a watch like this, the, the bracelets of these are great. I don't know so much about the vintage ones, but the modern ones that I've tried are, are awesome. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we've spoken about these enough. AP Royal Oaks. We could talk about it for months on end. Ooh, 1994. A very rare tropical tapestry. Did this dial actually go this color over time? Or is that how it came standard? Offshore. I don't know. I just, this is what I don't get is the formatting is all over the shop. Uh, we started with offshores and now we're kind of closing off with them. Uh, and we, we had this huge in between where it was just Patek classic pieces, which is peculiar. Very strange. 159 is my lucky number. Sam Ray says, interesting. Again, please tag me in the chat if you'd like to get my, my attention. I struggle so much with reading continual points. Oh, Blue Shirt, time to go babysit. You know what, Blue Shirt? It's been an absolute pleasure. Look forward to chatting to you on Sunday. Ah, we're going to have a good time, a good laugh, as always. I'm not so much of a fan of this, really, uh, overall. The color is cool. It's a little bit bulky for what it is but i mean that's the offshore right 1994 when when was this originally introduced i would imagine right then and there so it comes with a box and everything too which is nice uh and these are getting so popular i mean this this watch between 20 and 30 this watch is going to go for way more than that i don't know why they're undercutting the pricing so much for these honestly the condition is also superb oh yes now we're getting to the real good stuff why is the trend bigger watches nowadays? Aaron asked me. Good question. So my theory is, I mean, we can talk about how people are generally bigger. So obviously bigger wrists, bigger watches. I also think it's partly because it's a form of marketing. Should I leave this watch on the screen while I talk about it? Um, I do love the dial. This, what do they call it? Adventurine. Yeah, I do love the, the, the effect of the dial, but the, the freaking diamonds, man. Stop with the diamonds. 1993, birth your watch, 36 mil, get in. This will be me. I'll be getting this for myself. This is cool to look at. Ooh. So the biggest size for watches, my, my, my guessing is that in a way, you are, if you're a brand and you want to get your watches seen, you up the scale of the piece. So in a way, it's subliminal marketing without even having to try and sell it to someone. I think that's one factor that's becoming more prominent. I, I guess the big watch trend started with Panerai and, and the dive watch scene is the one that's taking over in many areas. I mean, looking at this, uh, 42 mils in 1999, pretty bold. Uh, I mean, we noticed the references beforehand. I do really like, I don't understand how this oxidation has happened, but I do kind of like how the screws have you know, what's amazing about this, actually, when you look at it, it feels like a proper wooden, a proper wood grain, don't you think? It looks like a, a whiskey barrel, ah, in a way. I th it's amazing. So the rose gold has been tampered with by the, the white gold integrating in. I don't know how it, how it all happened, but what's special about this? A massive, ah, very attractive, highly impressive pink gold and then a perpetual calendar. So that's something. I mean, you don't generally see perpetual calendar offshores at all. Between 75 and 150, wow, that's quite a high estimate. Uh, box papers, I don't know. 
I guess it does come with a, of the verification. So these are called the brick, right? Can someone help me? Can someone help me with this reference? I really do not know. Um, Samurai saying, am I the only one that thinks this looks like a Hublot? Well, Samurai, um, Jean-Claude Beaver was, was very much a part of AP's success in the developmental years through the 70s and 80s, I think. And when he hopped over to Hublot, bought them, uh, they, I mean, portal, Hublot literally means portal, Hublot. You know that the Royal Oak took its inspiration from the portal, so did the Nautilus. And yes, you're very right in saying that uh, it is inspired because it is fully. I mean, I'm pretty sure Jean-Claude Beaver's actually said publicly that that's exactly what they took, the aesthetic of this brand and, and incorporated into theirs, making it a bit more of a high concept watch next to um, the, the AP Royal Oak line. Salt water, sacrificial protection from white gold. <laughs> Uh, Eric, yeah, this does. I was going to say salt water, but I mean, someone who swims with a solid gold, pretty ballsy, got to say. Okay, moving on. Got a few more to go. 5402 from 1975. Fine and rare. How's this? They finally gave up at one point and they decided, nah, let's just keep it simple. 1975, 39 mil diameter. This is another great example. I prefer, hmm, which aesthetic do you prefer? Do you prefer the AP logo at the 12 or do you prefer the, the double batons? I prefer the AP logo at the 12. Uh, but I love the size. 39 mils for any wrist I think works so well. Just remember that this wears like a 41-ish, two mils bigger than its, its nominal size. Um, yeah, great presentation. The condition is also fantastic. Between 40 and 80,000. Yeah, I'd imagine it goes pretty well. And Sam Ray saying the descriptions are so funny. Yeah, I agree. The descriptions are very uninspired. Is that the right word? Megan's saying, okay, let's go back for a second. This watch weighs 400 grams. I know someone that would be bidding at this lot at 162. Yeah, I think we all do. Uh, 140 grams. F sorry, 400 grams. I've tried on a solid chrono at a boutique, and that was ridiculous. So I can't imagine. The bricks must be good forearm workout, though, right? Um, yeah. This is stunning. I mean, this is what, this is where I think what made the Royal Oak such a unique watch in the line is the fact that it's slim, understated. It's a sports watch, very much focused on being a dress watch. And it's something you can wear and not think about wearing, not feel like it's on your wrist very much. It's, it's that integral. That was the, the approach originally, I believe. And they've since been scaled up tremendously. The demand also, oh, well, who wants a Tiffany dial? Because here's one. Uh, between 20 and 40 grand. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I do not get the appeal for these at all. Can someone please explain it to me? Maybe. Because I've given you a description asking you questions, uh, talking about size increases and stuff. This, to me, I just don't understand why this was done in the first place. Was this even factory? Was this even a factory inspired? Uh, Aaron says he likes this. Well, I mean, you know, to each their own. It's definitely not for everyone. What the? Oh, hold on a second. By, by the time we get to lot 176, we're going to reach the, the topper of all the toppers, ladies and gents. You're going to laugh your heads off, okay? Do not look ahead. Enjoy this because it's going to be an absolute. Right. I don't know what happened here. Obsidian. Okay. First thing I thought was. You know, someone let the sand in. But I'm guessing this is how the stone has, has aged. Or this is just how the stone was cut. Nice looking bezel. Uh, it's it's textured. Okay. Highly rare and attractive. Get off it now. 16 grand to 32. Okay. Uh, I'm sure this will go for, for that. Nice looking piece. Subtle. Moving on. Ooh. Okay. We haven't finished yet. 1675. A rare and attractive, stop it, uh, between 15 and 30, uh, gold on gold. It's really clean. I got to say that that bezel is also charming. Um, not bad for an actress like Gal Gadot. Yeah, sure. Buffalo Trace, Carl. Oh, no. I'm missing something here. Uh, looks funky. Oh, old granddad or Buffalo Trace, it's time for a shot. Oh, we're talking about alcohol. Right, I think. Um, so... What is up with those hands? 
<clears throat> a fisherman's friend comes to action. Why are those hands like this? And I ask, Is, are, those, are those replacement hands? Someone please tell me. Wood watch. I, I've, I've never seen a handset like this on this model. Um, the flat matte dial is also quite appealing. I, th I think the way it's faded is also nice. I've never seen a handset like this on this watch, though. Yeah, between 15 and 30. It's clearly rare, and, a, and yeah, we've been, we've definitely been playing up this quite a lot. Root beers and, oh. Ugh. Gold calendar, lapis lazuli. Mm -hmm. This is just the topper. It's, you just ruined the Arabics by putting a diamond in it. Okay, goodbye. Okay, this is actually one of the first zeniths that we've really spent time on. Uh, 1991. I really like this watch. Uh, solid gold, uh, 40 mil, between 20 and 30. Wow, that's quite low. Again, this doesn't have box or papers, and this just changes. <laughs> I Yeah, I, I do love cherry, Megan, and I'm, I'm stuck with black currant. It's sitting in my cheek. Like, I don't even put it on my tongue. It's that bad. I just talk over it and hope that the, the menthol does its, does its trick. So this watch not having box or papers, look at the, the numbers. Between 20 and 30 is the expected price. Um, but I do love a Zenith Daytona. Why? I'm sure most of us know the balance on the dial. Those subdials are all equally placed, clean, symmetrical. And once they got to the modern in-house Rolex movements, everything was shifted. Yeah, I would totally pick up one of these. For this price, why the hell not? As a daily, get this as a daily watch and just enjoy it, you know? Okay, moving on next to our reset is stuck. Hold on. You're kidding. Hold on a sec. You're right. You're right. Very good point there. Tetrix, very good. So you notice that when the, when the 30 is reset, that's fine. That's running seconds. There's a bit of a problem. Hmm needs to be seen by a watchmaker it kind of sucks when your watch has to be checked after being serviced right another 6240 Ooh, i like this i really like this espresso dial they say 1967 between 40 and eighty thousand. yeah it's a good looking model very nice one of the best in this category i think this is tropical done right i think in many ways um again Let's see, uh, Perez saying, I've seen a video showing the 20% of the retail price of a full gold watch is actual gold. 20%. It's a small number, hey? Uh, this is a great example, as mentioned in the chat by a few. Espresso dial, yeah, good cup. So rare and attractive. Honestly, if anyone from Philips is watching this, I'm being, I'm being sincere, get rid of this description. Because if every watch has it, it loses all of its punch. As we've seen, it's just there's no point in having a description at all. Just say reference 6240. That's it. Very nice tropical finish. Uh, definitely does look like a coffee. The uh, the quality of the case is also in good nick, I would say. Uh, very sharp. Has been polished, though. I mean, it's not as sharp as you would expect. Nice looking reference. Right. Ten more to go, ladies and gents. And I do want to focus in on, uh, what do they call these dial these dials? These Italian dials that I always get wrong. I'm not a native Italian speaker. Um, by the time we get to 176, you're going to be bursting out laughing. Uh, it's it's one of the best watches of the show. The final 10. Can you believe it? Can you actually believe it? And we're not hitting the four-hour mark. We're going to try and motor through without reaching it. So... What do they call these again? Someone please help me. The, the Italian collectors, they love them. I've handled one of these before, and it was, a, it was mincemeat between 40 and 80,000. Uh, yeah. I mean, this is just a standard Zenith 16520 with this tropical sub-register. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure someone knows the reference. What's it called? It's Premezza, 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 you know? Okay, I'm just going to leave it there. Someone can maybe help with that a bit later. A couple, oh, a couple more references, and we're going to, I mean, this is bad. Okay, I'm not going to deny. This is bad. What we're going to see, absolute gold in a second. Oh, this is beautiful. 1991, very fine, rare, attractive. Now we can really just milk it because we're coming to the end of the show, and, oh, God. Right. 
Another one. What is the name of these subdials? Can someone please, anyone who knows the Italian collectors, what they call them? Um, should I just look it up quickly? Hold on a sec. I'm going to try and look it up. Zenith Daytona Italian dial. Let's see what happens. They are called Patrizzi dials. Thank you for your help, ladies and gents. You've been a wonder. These are called Patrizzi dials when they have these brown tropical effects to them. I handled one just like this, and it was in pieces, basically. And they were asking, like, freaking 30 grand or something for it i looked at them like what what are you on so another rare tropical registers yep <laughs> rigor tony i mean we could just go for it for days right okay carrying oh, oh. they're saving the best for lots they're saving the best for lots just hold on three more three more mama mama mia dolls yep yep ah three more and you will be it's the best. It's the topper of the show. I can tell you that much. It's the best you'll be seeing on this. These are the same kind of lugs you see on the leopard Daytonas, and oy, 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 oy. I just sit and I ponder. I question a lot of things, and I look at a watch like this. I question the meaning of life. It doesn't get much worse, Megan. You know what's coming up next, and it's it does. It totally does get worse, as we will be seeing. Okay, this is cool. Six two three nine. We're getting warm. Uh, those pushes, I mean, get the watch serviced, man. How can you have pushes? That is just decades of crud built up in there. Can you imagine what those have seen? How long does it take to just pop out those pushes to give them a bit of a rinse? Just rinse it under a tap. It doesn't have to be like filtered. It can just be standard tap water to give those a clean. It's disgusting. <laughs> anyway, Mark II bezel bracelet, 1964. Mm-hmm. Uh, fine and rare. What do they say? Attractive and fine. They don't say it's rare. Interesting. Uh, yeah, we've seen enough of these. See what I mean? The rareness just goes just goes out of the window. Uh, the case has been polished. This watch has been kind of butchered. Between 25 and 35 Mark II bezel and bracelets. That means that it's not all original, which means it's been pieced together. One more reference and, okay, calm before the storm. I call this the Petri dish, the bloodstone dial. You can see why. If you've ever if you ever dealt with Petri dishes before, you'll know that this is what happens when you start growing cultures in them, and this is a, a pretty good example. Right. Are we ready? Maybe we'll pay 10K. Yeah. Okay. The meaning of life, Daytona, Mausha says. Yeah. Okay. The Petri dish. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to reach lot number 176. I do ask for you to all stay in your seats, for you to have buckets nearby, because what you're about to see is unseeable. <clears throat> this is the best watch of the show for me. Uh, right, right. So let's just start by reading the description. A highly rare and attractive stainless steel chronograph with intense tropical underline dial bracelet, blah, blah, blah. This is actually up for auction. This is up for auction. I don't know what more I can say than silence, really. How... How could you possibly have something that looks like it's been shoe polished on your... Uh, what? What is that thing? Yeah, so this is this is going going to go between forty and eighty. Apparently, uh, I, it doesn't. It does have a reserve, luckily. So at least if it doesn't sell, it will eventually. Oh, my God. One way to end a show, right? This is just, yeah, 80, 80, 80 K. Yes, Andreas. Yes. Intense, intense caramel. A tropical dial. What would you call this? The, I mean, we spoke about Bunsen burners earlier, earlier, but this is like, this is shoe polish to the max. It's a 6238 reference, Megan. Yeah, I, I, I don't I barely know what that means, really. I just can't understand how is it possible that a dial can go that color? What have they done, really? I mean, you know, I'm glad I'm drinking, Carl says. That's a very good point. Uh, I'm not. I'm actually semi-sober looking at this, and I just, I, yeah. 
it's bad. It's really bad. At least you can tell the time on it, Thomas says. You know, that's a good point. All the subdials and everything are kind of hidden. Oh, God. Yeah, this is a win. This is one of the best, I think, of the show. It just caps off. Oh. So I hope you enjoyed that. Description said the dial was originally white. Someone took shoe polish to it. They thought, nah, let's go a bit more dynamic. Brown dial. I saw burnt marshmallow. Let's move on next. Ah, oh, thank goodness. We have some kind of levity. Right. 6204, exceedingly rare, historically important. Oh, cool. This is cool. You see where the Submariner is printed? Submariner Perpetual. I have never seen this before. Ah, oh, thank goodness we got the brown dial out of the way. Oh, by a coal miner, Dave. That's brilliant. S'mores watch. Megan, that is that I mean, that is it, eh? S'mores? You can call this the s'more. Right, get it out of my face. Honeycomb dial. Check where the Submariner is placed. On the left-hand side, Submariner Perpetual. With the pencil-styled hands. Yeah, this is nice. There are so many references out there. Uh, and this, I'm guessing, is pretty rare. But they say exceedingly rare, so I guess they must mean it this time. Uh, between 60 and 120,000. I would imagine it's going to go for... For more that is definitely not a nice tan ethan this this is what happens when you spend your entire life in a sunbed shame i feel for you daytona i do feel for you i hope you go to a nice home that's all i can say a home that respects you uh second time today the description has been somewhat true andreas yes i agree of sorts uh yeah another great example two more lots and we are getting can, can you believe we're actually getting to the end of the show? I, I can't. Uh, nice example of a sub. I've never seen it with the, the Submariner printed on the, the left-hand side there. Rolex Toilet Owner. Rolex Chernobyl. Ooh, you guys. 178, another Patek. Between 100 and 150. I think I'm just so fatigued of looking at these now. They're just, they're just everywhere. Highly rare and attractive. He would swear with the amount of time they repeat this that these watches they aren't rare and attractive anymore. They turn a brogue, that's a very good one. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, good. Okay, so we're getting to the last one, and it's another that is a cool right 1945, 250,000 between and 500. An important, very rare, extremely attractive yellow gold perpetual calendar. Yeah, okay, I think we've seen enough of these. I do like the large crown, that is cool. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do is zoom out of this, and is there a way that we can hop to, do I have another thing open? What references have spoken to you during the show? I think that's a good way to describe it. Anything that was really stood out. I think the 6536 is a great example of a reference that has. Um, I do love the Monte Carlo. They've been some good, they have been some good examples, but also just way too much classic Patek for my liking, at least. I don't know about all of you, but uh, as far as winners for me, I think I'm just going to go with Old Faithful. I think, I know it's not everyone's favorite, but uh, the 16, 16, 1655 is one that I, the condition is what speaks to me the most about this. The brick wins, Eric Bell says. You know what? That is a good example. Trash toner, extremely attractive. Oh, you guys. Nothing really did it for me. I guess Comex maybe. It's funny, hey? I mean, I, the last show that we did five months ago, the selection was so much more diverse. There was Zeniths. There was, I can't remember the others. There were lots of Omega-related pieces. Um, and, and Junior, thank you for the super chat, really. You missed the show. It wasn't much to see, really, I don't think. Just a bit of humor, a bit of satire here and there. The Johnny Player Special, Carl says. I mean, that was my winner from the last show. Bakelite GMT. Didn't meet the reserve, yeah. Freak AP for 7K. Yeah, it's been a good time. The variety has been insane. Bear in mind that this is a Friday. We've just ended and it's Saturday, this side of the world. Yeah. It's been a long haul and it hasn't been four hours. How cool is that? Ethan, he sees. Good. Loves the tropical dials, Megan says. I mean, I wish I could easily switch back and forth to these references, but sadly, it's not the easiest thing. I wish the site was a bit more dynamic. 
Got to love a 10, 16, 6, 5, 3, 8. The octopus. I'm sure there's someone out there that loves this. There's so much. Oh. But again, it's all of these diamond encrusted pieces too. It's just, they're everywhere, right? This is the only Speedmaster we saw. The only one. What? Uh, you would think that there would be more CK2998s. Uh, what, what's the other reference? I can never get bloody reference. I'm three hours in. You can imagine my brain's a bit frazzled. Comex was gorgeous. And so does Paul Newman Daytona. Uh, this is also a very good example. Did enjoy the panda a lot. But ladies and gents, it's been a near four-hour show, three hours and 40 minutes, which is quite a nice a nice change of pace for a change. We, we are quite big when it comes to the four-hour slots. I have to thank you all for uh, sticking with me as we've gone through. Stop the screen share. I want to try and keep this succinct. This is a bit of a change of pace. Got a different watch on the screen. Uh, oh, Jesus, Super Chats. Guys, please, you don't have to do this. Thomas, thank you. Absolute, really absolute pleasure for all of you. I have a day day champ diamond dial bracelet traded with a platinum Rolex. Uh, drunk is back. Mark, great show once again. Thanks for the memory. Lot 176. Beautiful. Absolute beautiful reference, right? Um, I just can't thank you all enough for being here to watch the show, to be a part of it. Uh, the turnout has been amazing, and you know, the discussions are always a laugh, no matter what. That's why I love the Phillips auctions, because we get to see just the most bizarre things, the descriptions. I got to, I got to get in touch and try and try and get them to understand that as enthusiasts, we need some, some more grit to these descriptions. Um, what about the corn de vache? Seems like you like the style. Yes, Moshe, sure, I, I do. I really do. A vacheron corn de vache, 1955. Absolutely stunning. But yeah, I mean, how's that? We've, we've been running a show over Friday. So that means no live show tomorrow. And, uh, I'm going to get back to designing apparel over the weekend and, getting samples sent out to me by the end of next week, I would imagine. Uh, Sunday, tune in to the Flippin' Zippo show. We have a good time uh, laughing about all things. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll put a community post up tomorrow. Should I do it? If Flippin' Zippo is still watching, maybe Thomas, if you represent the show, would you like me to put a, a post up on the community page and hopefully get some more in to watch us just completely laugh our heads off at whatever the subject is? Um, Nitsan and from Australia, geez, thank you all, really. Andreas, do you like the 222? I could read these for hours now, but I won't. Uh, I got I to gotta turn in. I don't know how you've all managed to stay up with me. Um, and everyone, everyone here, as always, it's a pleasure doing this. It's a joy. It's a lot of fun. And uh, hell, I'm just so chuffed that it's not a four-hour show for a change. This is actually less than the first, is it? Yes, it is. It's less than the first Phillips we did. Isn't that cool? Starting to be a bit more succinct, not gilding the lily as much anymore. Anyway, ladies and gents, please look after yourselves. I know that this has been a, a very peculiar week, to say the least. And the next month ahead is also probably going to be all over the show. Just remember, these make for the most amazing, amazing distractions. And I am, as always, your humble servant. Lots of love, everyone. Have a superb weekend. And see you in the next one. Cheers for now.